Mm-mm. Okay, okay, okay. What's going on, good people? This is your boy KDO back with the Reconstruction Project, joined by my guest, Mr. BG Method and Ghost. Hey, hey, hey. So, <clears throat> we have a pretty interesting topic that we're going to talk about tonight. Um, for anybody who comes in and wants to join the stream, you know, you're more than welcome to get on the panel, but the only thing that I ask is that if you disagree, you respectfully disagree. Will not tolerate in I will not tolerate fighting, disrespect, none of those things. We're gonna conduct this in a very, very professional way. <clears throat> Anywho, with that being said, let's get this party started. Uh BG Method, your mic is uh I'm yeah. on. Yeah. So <clears throat> so today's topic is the effects of integration on the African American community. I'm not gonna lie, I've been looking forward to this stream uh, all week. <laughs> I'm not gonna even front. So the very first, the very qu- first question I want to pose while we get this discussion started is. <clears throat> turn my do not disturb on my phone but the very first question I want to pose is just as a general overview um, and I'll, I'll throw this one at you first uh, BJ method do you think integration for the African American community was it more harmful or more helpful no, I definitely think it was more harmful. I mean, mm. just expanding on it for a second. First of all, I do have to say, especially for anybody listening, you know, you might have some older folks listening. I'm speaking from perspective of things I've researched, read, seen, and what my parents have said. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> I look at integration, <laughs> it, ha- it hamstrung us because we started, We that's when we get it to the, to the handout thing where we want to be part of the crew. We want to be part of what they're doing so bad that we want them to just start everything for us. Whereas before integration, when it actually was segregated and they was giving us secondhand everything and making us do it on our own, that's what we did. Uh That's what you saw. You saw black businesses start and really get, you know, they stayed afloat from black people you know, buying from them. And if we kept going along that route, we'd have more black businesses now. But when we integrated, <clears throat> we lost a lot of things. You know, we lost a lot. Let, let's just talk about schools. We, we won't even get into business. We'll talk about schools. You integrate the school. The black teachers who cared about the black t- kids basically went away. And they put those kids in schools with mostly white teachers. Mm. You think those white teachers cared about those black kids the same way? You think they answered the questions of those black kids the same way? You think they took the extra time to work with those black kids? I'm not saying all of them. It's not a 100% thing. Nothing's 100%. Mm-hmm. But definitely, probably 85% of those teachers did not take any interest in those black kids, no matter how much talent they had, no matter how much potential they had. Probably scared them if they saw potential. They go Mm. work with somebody with with the white kids instead. So those black kids started getting neglected. You know, and let's not even talk about what happened in inner cities. That's still going on. So whatever, you know, but but for me, just, you know, trying to keep it short and sweet. Nope, I don't think it really helped us. It wasn't done right. You know, so it is what it is. We we uh, we lost on that one because it was it was a, a. imbalanced deal mm. it wasn't as if they said we're going to integrate and you're going to get this thing we got we're going to integrate and you're going to get secondhand everything if if it's secondhand at all mm. that's that's what we got okay okay ghost same question do you think it helped or do you think it harmed <coughs> more well, What's uh, it, I, I i would go 
it would go both ways. I'm going to straddle the fence a little bit in some aspects. I think, yes, it did help. And in the other aspects, it did not. I got I wrote down, like, why we were talking while I was listening. Three things that I'll touch on. Obviously, it's a whole lot more than just three points. But I wrote down money. And I wrote down education. And I, op- I wrote down an open door. Okay, so before like back in the day i'm not, I'm, I'm i'm speaking on things that i've seen and things that i've heard and researched my own and my own family experience and whatnot back in the day like I, I've, I've been on it reading a lot of history stuff and listening to a lot of audiobooks <clears throat> we weren't allowed back in the day to like have our own stuff or or we had everything everything was 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 told was told with us was no for everything we needed so when we did go off and get our own things or whatever, as history repeated itself, bad stuff happened. But mm-hmm. with integration and stuff, it's like, all right, these things didn't happen as much. I'm not going to say they went away, but we had access to be able to get not just black owned money, but like access our foot in the door almost to a, a, a better level of living or a better level of of wealth than what we experienced which is not saying a whole lot because we weren't allowed to have a whole bunch of things and the door was always shut in our face or whatever so i get it also with integration or whatever for for on the on the parts of education and stuff i was like i remember i read on this little meme and uh it was talking i forgot i wish i wrote the dude's name down but it was this this guy who was like always he went to school they had to let him in and stuff because the whole integration but like he he kept going he kept trying to get in and they kept telling him no and they kept telling him no and until finally integration hit they let him in they put him at the back of the class they didn't answer his questions they didn't and they ignored him but still just because he was due to integration he was allowed into the classroom he, he graduated top of his class and, and everything everything else was was was, was, was maxed out he was a b honor roll student or whatever you want to call it dean's list and all that stuff so before that wouldn't have been allowed and that have been like a waste to be and i think he ended up being like a doctor or something i forgot what exactly it was but it wasn't just like just going to a regular school he actually went and learned some stuff and was able to bring that knowledge back to his community and and, and go places that like people at the time before integration didn't have access to and, and made it made it a thing and then with integration is like the other thing but my last point was like I, I wrote down open door and what i mean by that is like basically since they're not just outright telling you no they might tell you no and like all right the the big wigs get together it's like hey we ain't letting this dude come in here and be better at everything that we've been doing since like time began since we was in control we're not going to let him come in here and and show us up but we can't just outright kick him out and deny him we can do what we can to make it hard from him and maybe he'll leave on his own but we still have to let him in once you got your foot in the door and it's like all right I, i'm putting my foot in the door I, I like the salesman like you can't close me all the way out so just what i'm getting just this little bit is more than i had before so it is still to my benefit and that's where I'll stop. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm gonna save my I save myself for last. Um, I I think that it hurt us more. Um, I think it definitely hurt us more. I think that um, I think that when you're put in a situation to it's either evolve or die, you either do that, you evolve or die. And despite the fact that. Um, there were so many challenges facing African-Americans. It forced us to branch off and start our own communities. Um, It forced us to be our own lawyers, be our own teachers, be our own bankers, be our own mechanics, all of those things, right? And then it, and because we couldn't integrate or we wasn't allowed to um, patronize white businesses in the same regard, well, we could, but we had to eat out the back door and all this other good stuff. Um, it it forced us to basically circulate the dollars uh, um, um, hello, Nola 81C3. 
Um, but it forced us to um, circulate the dollars through, um, throughout the black community, right? And <clears throat> which in turn, it pretty much made black wealth. So yeah, it's like, to me, it, it, it was, it was, it was a, a, a very bad thing because they just brought us in and they treated us like crap when they brought us in. So the only thing that we didn't have anymore is that we didn't really have the economic power or the economic ability to move up. Even when we did affirmative action, if you look at it now, we're still not making the same as the white counterparts. So it was really to me, um, like I said, you know, integration, it, it, it killed back, it, it killed black businesses. It killed black growth. It did an exchange of wealth, um, loss of identity that we were just trying to find at that point in time. So I just, you know, my personal opinion, I don't um, think that it was helpful at all. Um, I don't think it was helpful at all. So I'm going to end my comments right there. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, I, I uh I don't discredit or discount that there was probably some people that were able to benefit. But it's just like okay, we'll go back to an old conversation me and you had, uh Josh, about mm -hmm. the Negro Leagues. Right. And and the MLB. Mm -hmm. And I'll I'll and I can, you know, I can expand upon that thing. You know how far I can go with it. But I'm right. just going to say, say it like this. Jackie Robinson benefited, right, mm -hmm. when he came to the MLB. And look what he had to endure to get that benefit. He had mm -hmm. to endure quite a Most of us are not that strong that we ain't going to, you know, wig out and hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. Jackie Robinson probably was the right man. But look at how many people lost out because of that one person benefit. First of all, they didn't let everybody in. They let him in. And then they call it integration. Right? Just mm -hmm. one. And then even after the one, it was just the few. There was so many. Satchel, Satchel Page had to wait till he was an old man to get into the MLB. And he was still good enough to be great. Mm -hmm. at, at over 42 years old, past 42 years old. He still was good enough to be great. But they made him wait, uh. you know, for what? Right. So the few got something. Yes. But here's the other part of it. With him being on the other side, it's not like Satchel Paige did not make a living playing baseball. Mm -hmm. It's not like Josh Gibbs did not make Josh Gibson did not make a living playing baseball. Mm -hmm. And all the countless other Negro League baseball players, not only them making a living, but the businesses around that. Uh -huh. That's why we lost. And I'm not saying like, a, a, again, I don't discount, you know, G, I don't discount what you're saying. Yeah. People did get something out of it. Uh -huh. Right. But, you know, the father in, of invention is when you don't have, and you have to do with what you do have. You make something. You what we what have we always done? Make lemon out of lemonade out of lemons. That's what we right. always done. Right. That's what we had to do. You make the best of it. You know, and and we've always done that. That's why we have put together so many things. Whether you talk about music, sports, entertainment, all that stuff. That was pretty much the only avenue they let us have. Mm -hmm. And we made the most of that. But what I'm saying also. On the back end, whether we go all the way back to slavery or the second slavery when they're called sharecropping, uh -huh. right? And they didn't want us to have an education to learn how to read and all that stuff, but yet we were sneaking and doing it. Uh -huh. We were doing what we had to do. And then you still was having people that became collaborators. You know, you still had the people who helped Edison create the light bulb. You still had the people who started open heart surgery and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that they was shutting that door to education to us for the most part. 
Mm. You know, you had black institutions rise up. Look, I went to Morgan State. I'm very proud of that fact. I'm going to tell you why. HBCU, HBCUs right now are having problems financially. Uh -huh. Morgan State is one of the few that don't have no problems. So uh -huh. much so that in the state of Maryland, all schools are part of a Maryland educational board for the colleges. Morgan State is not part of it. Not because they won't let them in, because they don't want to be. Because they don't need the state's money. Yeah. They got it. We good. I love that. That's the school I went to. That's my school. You know, so I'm saying we can do it. You know, but like I said, again, the MLB made it seem like, hey, we're better. You you can't prove that you're great unless you join the MLB, which wasn't true. Right. Right. Re remember, they never played them teams. They right. wanted to play them. They, they wanted sure to play did. them because they wanted to show them, hey, if we ain't better, we just as good. They knew. They knew. It's and just I, like in basketball when they tried to outlaw the dunk. <laughs> they changed the rules. They changed the rules on on uh, Will Chamberlain because he was just so dominant. Right. You know, and so on and so forth. So many things they've done. Warren Moon had to wait. This that's what I'm saying. You know, saying NFL. Warren Moon had to wait five years before you get in. He had to go to Canadian football. Canadian, yeah. And this yep. dude still was great. Right. So all I'm saying is that throughout history, you know, if people deal with people on an even playing field, if if segregate, I mean, not segregation, if integration was on an even playing field, that's one thing. I would, I would fully agree with it. Fully. Because I know things would be different right now. We wouldn't right. have Brian Flores come out and say what he said. Right. Because that wouldn't be happening. Right. We wouldn't have a league, two leagues that are predominantly black in the members who play the sport, but all the owners are predominantly white. Mm -hmm. And that's in basketball and football. Mm -hmm. You know, there's one white owner in, in professional sports. I mean, one black owner in professional sports, and that's Michael Jordan. Right. And people don't realize or don't think about what Michael Jordan had to do to get there. Right. None of those other owners had to do that. None of those other owners had to be great at their sport, transcendent at their sport. None of those owners had to do that. And then on top of that, it's not like they let Michael Jordan in the door just like that. What happened is another rich black dude who was so rich, they couldn't deny him, bought the team, and then he had to sell the team to Michael Jordan. Right. I bet you they don't they don't want no player to have that kind of power. Right. You know, that's just but that's an opinion. I, I let me state that that's an opinion. But um I'm just saying integration the way it happened to me. And we can't change it. That's that's the that I mean we're talking about something in the past. So it what's done is done. Mm -hmm. You know. Um all we can do is move forward. But what I'm saying is let's take Let's take the example that's set before us and start to go out here and do things for ourselves. Well, I want to say this, and I want to read this comment real quick. Um, Nola81C3 says, I think when it comes to the teachers, um, there's a lot of white teachers. I think that's what he meant to say. Only want to promote education to students whose parents they can't relate to. Um, I, I want to, I, I read that comment because it was something um, in relation to what you said earlier, um, BJ Method, when you said about, you know, <clears throat> the white teachers can't relate to the black kids. You know, when you come from a different environment and different culture, because make no mistake about it, the African American culture and the white culture are two different two different cultures, right? So we're coming from two different cultures, two different learning experiences, but we have the same standardized test, and when one group is catered to when it comes to that standardized test and the other group is failed it it, it 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 looks like okay well these children are just not as smart as this particular demographic the black kids are not as smart as the white kids and that's not to be true but i wanted to um 
I just want to kind of address that coming, but I wanted to also talk about, well, the thing about integration is that we have hindsight, right? We can look back and see the history from the Civil Rights Act in the, in the 50s and the 60s, from the uh, 1960s up to this point, and we can chart whether Black America has gotten better or worse. And pretty much we've gotten worse. When you look at all the statistics, everything has went down, right? Um, the, the marital rate has went down. The out of birth wedlock rate has went up. Um, the prison rate has went up. Mm. Um, there's a lot of things that we can point to and say it's gotten progressively worse for us um, after integration. And, it, and in my opinion, integration just made us a <clears throat> official underclass, right? Man, we we on the titty, man. That's what it is. So what now? We on the titty. <laughs> <laughs> we breastfeeding out here, you know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, mean, I, I, I concur. That's, I mean, Mike, okay. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, again, I'll say Black America is better in a certain way. And then in some other ways, like the ones you were speaking of, it's not. Mm -hmm. Right? Respect for ourselves is, and that's the and the funny thing, I'm going to say this, that's just the United States in general, we don't have respect for ourselves. Right. You know, but but I'm just saying it, it's, it's invaded us. And there was a time where it didn't. Like I said, mm -hmm. look, I'm, I, I, I implore anybody I, I'm bring up the Negro Leagues again. Go to the Negro Leagues Hall of Fame in Kansas City. Just go see it. Just mm -hmm. anybody listening, go see it. You have to see it. Mm -hmm. Why do you? Because you'll see something that you don't see today that they was doing back then. You see those people in the stands because they got a whole stadium in there, right? Mm -hmm. the pictures of the of the fans in the stands, but it's a whole like you know a replica of a stadium. And they show the black people, and you see how they dressed, mm -hmm. and you see black mm. men, black women together, mm -hmm. you know, as one, enjoying what we had. We didn't have no other league, but we had that, mm -hmm. you know. And like I said again, they have a whole thing that give you just a viewpoint of what it was when you walk out of the place. They got the whole two streets, two blocks where the hotels and everything and all the businesses were that supported you know, the Negro Leagues in that city of Kansas City, they have it there. And they tell you, hey, this is the way it was. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm saying that's some of the stuff that we did lose. Do I think we got better? Hey, we're, we're more educated. You know, mm -hmm. um, there are black businesses. There's there's an Atlanta out there. There's a, there's a Charlotte, North Carolina out there. You know what I'm saying? And those places really promote black business. You know, um, even mm -hmm. even in Tennessee, uh, they just recently had a, a big uh, a big to do for black business in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And um, that was really good. But that's what I'm saying, though. We are probably about 40 years behind on that. We should be we should be there already. But again, when we were doing things on our own, when we integrated where did our dollars go? Our dollars went from staying in the community to going outside of it. And and the thing yeah. about that is, don't mean to cut you off, uh, BG. Yeah, no, you good, you good. But the thing about that is, is that we have one point what three trillion dollars of buying power right now, mm -hmm. but we don't have one point three trillion dollars worth of black businesses right now. So, well, well, what happens? Think, think about what happens. Okay, black hair. Mm -hmm. That's one of the places that black businesses was strong. Mm -hmm. time. But yep. guess what happens? When they saw the buying power, what did the white businesses do? They came in and bought it. Mm -hmm. We actually sold. Mm -hmm. You know, and not realizing the damage that was done when we sold it. You know, we sold it. Yeah, that person, you made money. Did you make generational wealth? I'm not sure all those companies did. Mm -hmm. But, man, look, all the stuff that you think is owned by black people, 
It's not. As far as black hair, it's not. Right. But it used right. to be. Not. Right. It used to be. And that's 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 just it. When we do start something, you know, they see it's successful, they jump in. And, you know, and we gotta stop saying, Hey, you can have my business, I'll do business with you. That's but, integration, brother. That's integration right there. You gotta work with me. You can't have it or make me work for you. You gotta work with me. But here's the here's the thing. I agree with you. But the thing about <clears throat> the thing about the the, the how do I don't say this, the worst thing in my opinion about integration is, and we touched on this a bit earlier, is that it stopped in my opinion, black innovation. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, start, it it gave us the mentality. It was probably already there, but it allowed it to be, uh, it allowed us to develop a mindset that the white man's ice is colder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So it's like, well, well don't get me were, wrong. And I, I, I I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. But I do also understand that some some people in, in business are saying, hey, I want to get in your pocket because your pockets are deeper. Right. But the thing about it is, is what I'm saying is this right here, <clears throat> is that when you're forced to, okay, I, I don't have access to you and our dollars are circulating in the African-American community. Um, I'm not looking at Jim as though Jim is inferior. And I think the problem one of the other problems with it, with immigration is that when you, the word of God says to the hungry man, even the bitterest thing tastes sweet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So when you're starved for something, even though something may not be good for you, it's good to you, you. you say it again. It's good to you. Right. It tastes good to you. It tastes sweet to you, even though it's not, like I said, it doesn't do anything for you. And, and I, I think white people, I think white society at by and large forced, they they never wanted black people to be their equal. So every time we built outside of, or even when we were building all these towns and stuff like that, they came and burned them down because they were becoming too prosperous, right? But that was just because we want to keep you as a permanent underclass. I think immigration allowed for, because when you integrate, there's a lot of things that should have went in. Like you said, um, um, BG, there was a lot of things that wasn't done correctly, right? So you integrated this all, this oppressed and marginalized group of people into the larger society, and they're just happy just to be there. Do, you, do, you, do we get what I'm saying? So it's like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to be at the Alabama, but I'm going to yeah. neglect the Jackson State, yeah. right? I'm happy to be at um, Florida State, but I'm gonna neglect the gambling. So it's like, yeah, the, yeah, you, 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 you know, you was making crumbs in comparison to your 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 white counterpart, but you was still your own business person. You get what I'm saying? You're your own man. You were your, your own man. You were charting your own path, right? And I do think that, um, because let's just be honest. Let's okay. Let's just take high school. Let's just go to high school for a second, right? How many of us, when we went into high school, when we went into the cafeteria, right? Because we, we're tribal by nature. We group up by nature, right? We group up with our own like kind. It, there doesn't have to be a racial component to it. We go where we feel like we belong. Right. Ismail coming through. He said, I fear he got the quote with... Uh, um, you know, Martin Luther King said, I fear that I may have integrated my people into a burning house. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mm-hmm. Ishmael, you welcome to come up on the panel again, man. We enjoyed you last week. <laughs> Just going to put that out there. Um, but um, in fact, let me put the link in the, in the, in the, in the description. Um, my bad. Wrong thing. Um. But what I was saying is that hey, I love that. I, I read that. I love I love that he put that up there. Right. You know, because a lot of people don't we always pick and choose what, what we want to listen to that 
that Dr. Uh, King said. And, hey, right. and for that reason, I'm going to be honest, let me be 100% here, that for that reason, you have a, a lot of young black men. When I was 16, 17, 18, probably about 16 to probably about 20, I don't know if I was down with MLK that much. I was more, <laughs> I was more on, was on, on Malcolm side. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You know what, team? But as mm-hmm. I got older, I started gravitating oh. towards Malcolm. Well, I mean, look, okay. in, in all honesty, like I said, I was all on, on Malcolm. And then I started hearing more things that Dr. King said and did. And then I started mm-hmm. finding out that actually them brothers started to come together and they wanted to do some things together. It's just, right. hey, look, I'm a, a comedian. Bro. There's a comedian that that, that uh, he's dead now, but his name is mm-hmm. Patrice O'Neill. Patrice yeah, O'Neill. I love Patrice O'Neill. Ooh, man. <laughs> but Patrice O'Neill said, he said, man, everybody who's ever tried to bring people together gets killed. Mm-hmm. And he said it in the middle of a joke, but he wasn't joking. Nah. He was telling the truth. And right. you know, you, why are you laughing? You got to listen to that truth. Mm-hmm. Malcolm decided to try to bring people together. Malcolm got killed mm-hmm. when you know Martin tried to bring people together. He got killed. Mm-hmm. It, you know when uh, what's my man? Uh, they just made a movie about him. Fred. Fred Hampton Fred. tried to bring people together. Mm-hmm. He got killed. You know everybody tries to bring people together. They kill them. They don't just do something about them. They get rid of them. Well, it was the fear of the black messiah. And that was the whole that was the whole thing behind COINTELPRO. Like when it came to Malcolm and um the Nation of Islam, like the CIA and the FBI, they were heavily involved in that situation. They pinned it on that when you do your research about um the assassination of Mar- uh, Malcolm X, you know what I'm saying, you understand that there were some brothers that went down that didn't have nothing to do with that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, there was some jealousy in the nation, and they used that against them. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you know who did, who, you know, you know what the deal is. Right. Because, again, as long as, first of all, they were scared of Malcolm anyway, because he did have so much power before he got enlightened. Mm -hmm. But once he really got enlightened and started to bring people together, yeah, that fear was got, you know, it got turned up all the way to 20. Right. You know, it was already on 10. It mm-hmm. got turned up double quote. That's when he went to Mecca. When he went yeah, to Mecca and came when he back. Went to Mecca and came back, and that dude was, <clears throat> he was saying the things he was saying. Yeah. Yeah, that scared him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, so so again, you know, it's just it's just one of those things, man. You know, they we try to we people come together. Like you said, it's true. There's been many experiments. You walk into any room. Any room, mm-hmm. it ain't got to be the lunchroom in school. Any room you walk in, you're gonna look at the people that look like you, right? Now, if you can't see people that look like you, you're gonna look at the people and see who reminds you of you, and that's mm-hmm. the funny part because I'm from the city, you know, and it, and part of my life we was, you know, we was, we was living, you know, check, check, you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. you know, the government cheese and all that good stuff, I'm gonna look and see. <laughs> Who I recognize. That government cheese was hard as hell to melt, wasn't it? Man, look, <laughs> look, bro. You used to had to, you used to cut that cheese, man. <laughs> you used to cut the cheese, you had the fat end, <laughs> you mm-hmm. had the, sl- the slender end, you trying to make it fit the bread so you can make that grilled cheese. <laughs> yeah. Man, that mug, that mug, you like Dana had to take a blow to blowtorch to that daggone cheese the for the melt, what? man. And, and you had to cut that sucker with like a butcher knife. <laughs> you can't cut it with no regular <laughs> knife, man. It just <laughs> <laughs> it was it was not happening. It was, not, no. but here's the, here's the thing about this also, Team Supreme. Um, I, this is this is the question I want to pose to the panel. What effect did the did, did integration overall have on the black family? What did it have on the black family? It, yeah, I don't, I don't want to say it. Look, the black family, the family unit got destroyed during slavery okay that's that's the first i mean that's the first thing. i disagree i no, disagree now i disagree to... i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna go to your finish but i'm gonna tell you why i disagree go ahead now. i mean i'm sorry it, it got destroyed during slavery but but when i say it got destroyed during slavery i mean you know just just the eh, 
it, we we get into it when you whenever but i'm just saying it got destroyed during slavery let's say let's just say that we tried to repair it after mm-hmm. okay so after when families can stay together mm-hmm. the intense poverty did a number on us too but we came out of that mm-hmm. we came out of that and as we came as we become began to come forth out of that and you had more black families that were staying together you mm-hmm. had more of these people like i said that i saw when i go to when you go to the uh ML, the the negro leagues uh mlb uh hall of fame and you have more of these families you see together where mother father child or children dressed well mm-hmm. you know own their own family car not being in debt and so on and so forth right mm-hmm. we, we began to repair it you know i'll say this for me i come from you know my wife and i both come from families where our fathers were dead mm-hmm. and both of them my father my father came from a family where his father was there but his parents weren't together but his father was there his father came and got him when he was in trouble when you know things with his mother wasn't going well so i come from a line of people that their parents were there so that makes me want to stay that makes me want to i believe in that Mm -hmm. right well integration happens okay well before integration before integration um uh uh theodore roosevelt not theodore roosevelt, teddy roosevelt not teddy roosevelt, uh, uh franklin roosevelt i should say fdr mm-hmm. you know he started the you know the square new deal and all that crap welfare blah blah blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. they didn't and know what they did right they kept on going with it, kept on going with it. And then it became a weapon. I don't think it started out as a weapon. I don't think they meant it that way. But it became a weapon. Because really it should have been a temporary fix for what was going on at the time. It shouldn't have been something that's still going on now. But now it's a weapon. And what? how do they use that weapon? They keep black men out of the family, out of the home. Mm-hmm. You know, they separate. Every chance they get, they separate, whether it's through jail, through welfare system, through child support and so on and so forth. They separate as best and quick as they can. And we fall for it. I have to say we fall for it because it's not like there's some rules that are different. Like I said, again, the whole thing of black men, the way we get locked up and what we get locked up for and how long we get locked up for it is not fair. You know what I'm saying? It's not even. It's, 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 it's not the same rules on that. But as far as mm-hmm. the welfare system, it's the same rules. But we get caught up in it. Because we think we're getting something. And my wife and I was talking about it today. We have people that get on welfare and they think they don't pay taxes. Oh, yes, you do. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm mad because I'm paying for you. But they taxing your shit too. Excuse my friend. They they tax <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so you know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But but people are so foolish and so ignorant, they think they're getting over. Man, you living, mm-hmm. you know, hand to foot, man. You barely living. You ain't living mm-hmm. out here. And then you right. can't take care of your kids, but you think you're getting over and you're not getting mm-hmm. over. And that's your foolishness, and that makes all of us work harder. You know, well, I'm gonna so, tell you. I'm gonna yeah. tell you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you why. Um, let me go back and, and and address why I said I disagree with you. For one, you have to understand what we were brought to this country for. We were never brought to this country to be each other's counterparts. No. Right. So, the our family dynamic was already destroyed prior to us getting on this boat. Right. But that's we but were. That's why, but but you just proved my point right there. But hold on, hold that's on. that's where you prove my point, Josh. But think I, about it. I get what you're think saying. About what you just said. I get what you're saying. We're gonna add Ishmael to the panel. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I mean, but what I'm because they destroyed it not not just when they got when we got here. They destroyed it when they got the people. Okay, but this and, is and what then I'm they saying. kept it destroyed. This yeah, this is what I'm saying though. Okay, so most of the slaves that was brought to the New World were were male. 
they start bringing the women over um to be to be reproduced As a matter of fact they did something tr- uh horrible to women they said if, if you can produce 10 healthy babies and not die you can get your freedom and back in those days that was dang near impossible right the 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 mortality rate for um, the childbirth mortality rate was just astronomical right if you had one and lived you were lucky they told her 10 right and then they did something else is that they went in there and changed the laws um every every known law i'm gonna say it like this right here they changed the the laws to say that the way of the mother went the way of the children meaning that if the mother was born into slavery then the children would be slaves they did that so that it didn't matter who got the woman pregnant. It didn't matter his status. The children would always belong to the state. They would belong to the government. They would be slaves, be right? Yeah. So <clears throat> what happened after slavery is that black men took black women with them because they were never a woman. Remember, she was brought here to be the concubine to the white man, right? And we start building something together. So it's going back to that adage that you said, um, BG Method, we were making lemons, um, making lemonade out of lemons, right? And they started to see what we can do when we band it together. Because we are a hodgepodge of people. If you do your genetic test, you're probably going to be broken down in like three or four different day on try from three or four different tribes out of Africa. That's really what it's going to be, right? Um, but we are a hodgepodge of people, hodgepodge of African tribes, West African tribes, some um some central african tribes and you know every now and then either uh, you know west uh, eastern african tribe or something like that but like i said i digress um when it came to when it came to integration what integration did for one at the, around the same time you got to remember and um you have to remember, I'm stumbling over my, my thought for a second. I apologize. You have to remember, this was going on at the same time with the women, the um, women's lib, right? So they made black women a double minority. And like what you said about what FDR when it came to the New Deal, right? So they made jobs scarce for black men because black men were still being lynched. They were still being thrown in prison. All these things were still going on hard and heavy. So they pretty much reinforce the ideal and what they have from slavery about black men to black women, which is he can't be counted upon. That's why every time we built something, they came and tore it down. So mm-hmm. the the black family was far more, and, and I, I can pull up the stats to prove it. The black family was intact, had was still intact. 90% of, 90% of all black women were still married in the 1960s, mm-hmm. right? After the 1960s, it took a nosedive. It took a dramatic mm-hmm. nosedive because they had a different husband called the government. And they integrated black women in that. And the crazy thing about it is black women are not the primary recipients of uh of welfare. It's mostly white women. No, no, it's not. It's it's never been black people. Because well, def- I mean, look, that's an easy fact to see just for the simple fact of look at the broad numbers of how many black people are here versus how many white people are here. Right. But they the didn't fact, um, us. they just use it. They just weaponized it. Yeah, it's, it's, Ishmael um, sent sent a, uh, made an important point. He said they put the man in the clo- man in the home clause, which was one hundred one hundred percent accurate, mm-hmm. right? So right. they gave him welfare, but they took they the man took outside the home. They took the man. That's what I'm saying. That's what I say when they weaponized it. I, look, right. I got family in Baltimore right now that are married. Mm-hmm. That their husband can't be there mm. right now. When the man show up, they gotta be gone. Well, this which which leads me to, to say my <laughs> next point. The house. Well, this which leads me to say my next <laughs> point, team. And I said this kind of on a stream ago. Integration turned the African American community, or it it um integration. Official, how do I say this? Because I'm stumbling over my thoughts and my words. What I believe the integration did, it made it official that the African American community was a matriarchy. And it effectively turned the black mm. family upside down. Mm. It effectively made 
African American women the new overseer. Mm. You don't think so? I, I think there's a step too far to give in. A no, yeah, it's but, not a step too far. <laughs> it's, it's I, I do, I do, I, I do. Because I, I, I say it like this. I, I guess I feel that way because I know it. Look, like I said, every time we get, every time you get close to mm-hmm. making things where, let's put it this way, we don't need you. Or you can you don't have control of us, and I'm talking about minorities versus the government, but in specific mm-hmm. black minor, the, you know black, the black race. Mm-hmm. They do they have they have a, a card to play. But what's the, so, what was their card? So so I, I I get it that you're saying that minority was that I mean uh, in, integration was that a uh, card to play at the time, but like I said again. I, I'm pretty sure you know about Willie Lynch's, you know. Yeah, I know. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, again, and just like when they sell people into slavery, just like they didn't they didn't allow us to marry. Right? They mm-hmm. just like, it's just, no, this is what I'm saying when I say they didn't allow us to marry. Yeah, there's some, especially when you go and you do the research, South Carolina is one of those states where actually they let them have a lot, keep a lot of things intact. So when you hear some of these people that talk about slavery, say, hey, well, all black people weren't, you know, upset by slavery. A lot of them be from South Carolina. I hate to say that, but that's the truth. Because the Gullah and the Geechee got to keep a lot of their, a lot of their stuff, right? Mm -hmm. They got to keep a lot of their cultures and they got to keep, they got to stay married sometimes and raise their families. But in a lot of places, no, First of all, the slave master may let you have kids because he wants to continue to grow his workforce, right? Mm-hmm. But when it became a problem, like for instance, say, you know, this slave over here, this female slave, got in trouble, was going to get whooped. Mm. But the male slave who was in love with her, who felt like he was married to her, felt like she was his bucked up when he saw that. That's a problem. Mm-hmm. Automatically, I got to get rid of you. I'd rather sell you to somebody else and make some money off you and go get something else, somebody else rather than keep you two together because that's going to cause a problem. That's going to cause you guys to plot against me. Mm-hmm. That's part of the reason they had to keep it apart. That's part of the reason they felt that way. They had to keep all all types of control they wanted. And on top of that, you know, hey, you know the slave man was tipping down into the slave quarters. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And so on and so forth. But but all I'm saying is they they wanted to break it then. Look, they didn't look at it, they didn't treat us humane at all. All right. You know what I'm saying? So for you to have a family, that's out of the question. That's out of the question. But most oh, of the time I, I don't mean it. they removed those mean it. males. They removed those males before mm-hmm. long. Whether it was a reason or not. They're not going to mm-hmm. grow old with that woman. That's that's right. just not. And then, so when slavery is over, they attack the man. By every time there's something to attack the man for, just like think about, um, think about the Ku Klux Klan and all that stuff, and all the groups that the white terrorist groups that came out and terrorized black people in the 1800s, late 1800s, mm-hmm. early 1900s, and so on and so. On. Still try to terrorize black people now, but. People got guns, so they can't, they can't terrorize the same way. But, but you know what I'm saying? They mm-hmm. who, who did they really try to terrorize? Who did they really try? They did something to the man. What is that proving? The, this man can't protect you, right? But that's what I'm right? saying. I, and I know that's, that's what you're saying about. I know that's what you're saying. That's that's why that's why I said that. Mm-hmm. It's just another card in the deck. It's not the reason. That's what I, I'm I didn't. Saying. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't say it was. I'm gonna get Ishmael in here. But I didn't. I wasn't it's saying it another, was. That's, and that's all I'm saying. It's, and, and so, if you're just saying it's just another card in that deck, it's done damage. <clears> yeah. <throat> but did it? It's just. It's. It's like I said. You know. Hey. It, it's another card in the deck. We playing spades. It's another spade, and they just cut this. Cut this uh, suit. That's it. Right. That's that's but, all I can say for it. 
here's what I'm saying, and 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 I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna let Ishmael speak because he's been waiting for the speak for a minute. No, you all are making making some really great really great points. I'm just I'm listening and learning. Well, I'm, I'm, we got still got to bring you in here though. Um, my thing is is it I to me is not Hitler. It's not the final solution, if I can say that on YouTube. But the fact of the matter is, they couldn't kill us. They they couldn't kill us, right? So if they couldn't kill us, what they wanted to do was make us obsolete. One mm -hmm. of the ways that you make a man obsolete is you make him um, the low, the lowest of the low, right? Mm -hmm. We are lowest in every metric as a demographic, black men, right? And without the black men and the black male unity, I mean the black men and the black female unity, then you, you're not going to get anything that could even rival white supremacy, Right. So mm -hmm. when you when they integrated us and they put all the put like at the advent of feminism, like third wave feminism. Right. And you made a black woman a, a double minority because she's already black and she's a woman. So she's a double minority. Right. And you make all these programs available to her. Right. Mm -hmm. But you don't make anything available to the male. What you're doing is you're effectively saying, OK, this is the new overseer of the African-American community. It was a card used to keep uh, the African-American community as the permanent underclass, right? Mm -hmm. um, and when, you in when they integrated us, they integrated us with certain things in place. Like white women have certain things that are, that are available to them just like black women, but it didn't mm -hmm. affect the white women the same way because they're, they're the white man, this is his world, right? And I, That's I what I'm saying, yeah, it's, it's, it is his world. Right. But what I'm saying when they did, okay, when they did integration, when we pushed for integration, we effectively abandoned everything that we was working for. Right. And the women had to follow our lead within the community. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you integrate someone in your house, this is like, if, if somebody comes in my house right now, right. Let's just say my wife's brother come in my house with his wife. Okay. It doesn't matter the fact that you're a man or you're a husband. You're still in my house. I'm still the head. <laughs> you get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But mm -hmm. it isn't if if I got a if you got this three story mansion and I got a little teepee out there. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not in your house or not on your space, and I'm living in my teepee. Me and my wife. That's still my teepee. I'm still the king of that castle. That's so right. when you when you integrate us into your home, right? Mm -hmm. You effectively made me obsolete. Okay. Case in point, I don't really like modern day churches. I tell, I say this all the time because to me, I, I see the model that it emulates. It emulates a white supremacy model. This, you don't have to believe me, but whatever. A lot of these, uh, um, uh, Jennifer Wheeler said, to keep black women dependent on anything but black men. And man is more likely to fight for his family, separate him from it. And he would have feel defeated and less likely to fight. That is an amazing point. What's a fact? That is a fact. Yeah. That's that. Hey, hey. that is a. What did, what did she I have to highlight that comment. I got to highlight that one. That was she a just, great comment. She, she just said. She just said they started that during slavery. That's what they did. That's true. That, that's the first. That's the first. That, you know, that's they, true. You breaking okay. them. You breaking them. Right. You trying to break us, and and they've always tried to break us. I. I I don't look what you just said makes a lot of sense. I don't want you to stop. I just want to say this before we, as we keep going, look, mm -hmm. that's, that was the card that was played then. Mm -hmm. There's another card that's probably been played or being played right now. I should say it's already been played. Mm -hmm. It's already been played past integration to keep us the way they have us. Okay. You know, well, let me see. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no I, I'm just saying, just, just, you know, just, you know, tag that. We might not get to it today because I, I can't. And, she, and, and she said, and she did a follow up comment. I mean, she dropped some gems. She said, exactly. And the welfare system is the redo. Wow. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> like, she just need to put a mic drop emoji. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. Gems, my friend. Yeah, pretty much. We talk about. That's, that's your friend, Alex. That's my friend. Ah oh, man, yeah, she she, she 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 might dropping out there, picking it back up and dropping it again. 
Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Right. But um, it's just like when I see these these. Do you know more divor- the divorces are occur in the? Hey, I can't even talk right now. More divorces happen in the black church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, and it's it, it, and the crazy <laughs> the crazy part about it is is because the women come in that church, and they see the pastor as the man of God. Now, I'm not going to even begin to tell you how wrong that is according to the Word of God, right? Because even the church model itself is ungodly, right? But they come in there and you see a man as the power. Like this is what you're saying. He is the authority, right? And your husband, and this is what these churches teach, your husband has to be in submission to this man. How what? can it? K.O., uh, don't start, because you know what? You know how I get on that one. I, I, I'm, I'm just I saying. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying. This is what I'm saying, team. So how can a woman see her man as the authority when her man has to bow to another man? If she feels any type of way she's going to bypass her what in the military what we call that we call that what the chain of command she's jumping jumping the chain she's gonna she jump gonna the, jump chain, the chain right <laughs> she's gonna jump the chain and she's gonna go to pass her this is how they be saying she's going to pass her and her <laughs> husband word is going to become obsolete pretty soon she's going to look at her husband like though there is really no point of me and you being together and what mm-hmm. they do, they divorce those husbands and they go get another man that is going to be in complete and utter submission to that pastor. Right? So it's a mindset, to me, is a microcosm of a bigger situation that goes on in America. Right? And it, it, it really affects black women. Right? And they don't understand why there is no community anymore. Right? Because when we integrate it, we effectively said, I'm under, under, coming under, I'm willingly coming under the submission of the white man. And a lot of people don't seem to think that that's what happened, but it did. You are already subjected to the United States government, but when you integrate it, you said, I'm no longer going to build anything separate from you. I'm going to build with you. And But there's already a head. So the only thing I can do is further your agenda, right? And me and my elk or my woman has to submit to that. And when they told the when you when you make something available like welfare and then you put a clause in there that says, but you can't have your man. But he can't be in the house. Yeah, he yeah. can't be in the house. Mm-hmm. Right. You and just he basically obeys. and he obeys it because <laughs> will the people notice or not? Because. Black men, okay, they left their homes, but they didn't leave their homes because they was just being sorry men. They were literally not allowing jobs to be available for black men. So these dudes had to make choices. Do I stay in here and we all starve to death or do I leave and let this woman and my children eat? Well, think about the, the, great, the great black migration. Look, my mother's family's part of that. You know, my mother's family's from Mississippi. My parents wouldn't meet if it wasn't for that. But my my grandfather moved from Mississippi to Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Right? That's the great migration. Not everybody took their families when they did that. Mm-hmm. Some of them took their families. They were looking for jobs. So you go mm-hmm. so you go from somewhere in the south, all points in the south go to big cities like Baltimore, Philly, New York, Detroit, Chicago, you know, LA, all that stuff. Right? Some families, they couldn't afford to bring the whole family. So mm-hmm. the man left and went. And then he tried to bring his family on the back end. Mm-hmm. Right? That was, that was, you know, that's hard work. You know, yeah. you know that, Army, mm-hmm. all, you know, deploying and all that stuff, that's hard work. That's hard to do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But they did it. They did it. But again, like you said, you know, a lot of things is, that they try to separate as where they can, how they can. So they put these things in place, these rules in place. They add these little poison pills like they added in the welfare system. You know, all the poison pills like they add in the whole, you know, just like they used to say, hey, women, black women didn't used to put dudes on well on uh, on child support. 
Mm-hmm. They didn't. They didn't. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's a that's a new thing. That's a new thing. That's a nineties thing. You know, and now they're putting brothers on child support. And then you could be doing the right thing, you know what I'm saying? But man, you know how hey, look, like I, like they say, hey, just take it to court. <laughs> just just go to court with her. There ain't mm-hmm. no use of you uh uh keeping the receipts. That's not gonna help you. It's not gonna help the court trust don't care me. about that. The court don't care nothing about that. You know, because they try to care you every at every every turn. And that's the crazy <clears> part, is I don't know any white dudes that go through that. Not not saying they don't go through the whole thing about they have to pay child support. What I'm saying is they don't go through too much of the they are paying they they made a deal with their wife or their ex wife mm. and they paying and the ex wife taking the money and then turn around and take them back to court take them to court anyway and say they wasn't paying. I don't mm-hmm. I know white dudes that 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 do it that way and that that's not what's going on. Mm-hmm. I don't that I can't speak to. I mean you know what I'm saying I. I can't speak to that. I just know that that's, that happens. Well, I'm going to say it like this right here also, but you got a woman that has been taught that her man doesn't have that. Or I'm going to say it. you have a black woman that's been taught that the black man has no value. And she's mm-hmm. also been taught that the system is her husband. So when, whenever that man seems to get out of line, I'll just stick the system on you. Like I said, they made the black yeah. woman the new overseer. I got you right? with that. You use the system and beat us over the head with it. Weaponize it. Yeah. They weaponize mm-hmm. it. Just my wife said something to me. We were talking about an incident that happened between one of her family one of her family members mm-hmm. in Africa, right? And listen, <laughs> America is jacked up and a penal system in America is jacked up. But if you gotta go to jail, you probably want to go to jail here. You know what I'm saying? You do not want to go to jail in one of those mm-hmm. African countries. Like it just you just don't. <laughs> it is misery, right? At least you're gonna get a, a nice cot and, and bread and water and a potential <laughs> phone call here. They not giving you none of that stuff over there, right? So she had a we had a family member that um had to deal with the system over there. And um my wife said something to me um because it was a female family member, and my wife said something to me about um, you know, the girl basically went to jail protecting her fiance. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, now, don't know if she was in on the scam, but you know, she wrote she wrote for her dude, right? So me and my wife was talking about it, and she was like, Well, you know, she understood why she didn't give the guy up. And I was like, Well, why you say that? She's like, Well, that's her, that was getting getting ready to be her husband. Why would she tell the police? Why would she cooperate with the police on her man? That's destroying herself. Now, this is something that my wife said, right? And so it it hit me so hard because I was just like, do you realize how easy that black women call the police on black men here? Like, it's second nature. If you're not doing what I want you to do, I'm calling the law. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And hey, I, I... <laughs> keep going, but, keep going. But but white women aren't necessarily they don't they don't necessarily have that embedded into them like that to like if something goes wrong, call the police on you. When they call the police, you best believe somebody getting their head whooped. Something crazy is going on. Now I'm not saying that we don't have white women do jacked up stuff because you do, but it's not why it's like majority of black women have that mentality. Like, I'm yeah. going to get the government on you. It's, it's, I, I feel you on that. On a I want to get Ishmael thoughts, Brian. We've been talking a lot. Let's, let's, let's let Ishmael. No, like I, like I said, I, you know, I'm, I'm just listening. I, you, you all have made some really, really great points. I mean, I think some of the phenomenon that you're speaking about, you know, you really got to look at capitalism and the role that capitalism has played in all of these things. You know, yeah. I, I agree um, with the comment that the young lady put in the chat, you know, this whole matriarchal structure, it began on the slave plantation. Mm. It began on the slave plantation. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I wouldn't even say that it was necessarily a bad thing in all instances. I think it's in many instances, what you saw was a black woman breaking her son, quote unquote, so that he would not fall to the hands of the slave master because she knew that the brutality he would experience would be great. Mm -hmm. 
So she would try to negotiate to, to save him. Mm-hmm. And to that point, you know, the white man looking at the black man as a threat always has, mm-hmm. even to this day, he began to defer directions and authority to the black woman. You better speak to him, get him in line. Mm-hmm. You ever been out with your lady to a restaurant and such? And the person gives her the check and not you hands your lady to check or you go to a mall or something like that. And people are talking to your woman and not talking directly to you. I don't know mm-hmm. if you experienced that, but I've experienced it many, many mm-hmm. times. I don't think that people are very conscientious of it, but over the years as a result, like the black woman has kind of been pushed to the front as you talk to her. Right, 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 right. Right. Even with decisions with ball players and stuff like that, kids who want to go to the NBA or the NFL or whatever, especially if they're coming from like maybe a broken home, but the father is somewhere around. The recruiter mm-hmm. is negotiating with the mother, mm-hmm. not with the father of that of that 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 scout. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. I you yeah. know I've literally heard scouts like agents say. You know, if a father is stepping in and saying, I want my son, you know, to um, finish his college education and not go into the draft early, Mm -hmm. they will undermine the father and go talk to the mother and convince the mother to try to convince the son. Mm -hmm. Totally circumventing the father's authority. You're not married anyway. You're not in the home anyway. You don't matter. Mm -hmm. That whole attitude really started to take place on the slave plantation and just it's kind of developed into these various iterations throughout history. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still it still persists like it still continues. That's what you know, you just have to pay really close attention, attention to it. And unfortunately, to your point, I think a lot of a, a lot of our women have internalized that now. And that's why they have the attitudes that they have. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like she's been so kind of, she's been exposed to this and it's been ingrained through our generations and so on and so forth to the point now where she's embraced this. She's embraced this authority, so Mm -hmm. to speak. And so, yes, she will weaponize it, right? Like she will call the cops on you if you get out of line or if you, you know, if you, separate from her and maybe you know start a new life with a new woman or whatever the case may be and y'all share kids yeah i'm gonna try to screw up your life Mm -hmm. right i'm gonna do these things i'm gonna say that you did something or that you raised your voice or whatever the case may be so unfortunately we got some women you know that internalize this deferring of power and this acknowledgement of a matriarchy. I mean, this matriarchy was really, really established, you know, by the white supremacist structure. Right. Yeah. It really was. And it's been reinforced and supported since our ancestors were brought to these shores. Mm -hmm. Yep. Every new card is played in that, with that in mind. It's it's definitely has to be played that way because we scared them and we scared them because of how little, support we have and the ones of us that can make it through you know so that, that's why so when that's i hear black women talk about like when i hear black women talk about patriarchy and stuff like that they really do not understand that we as black men are victims of patriarchy right mm-hmm. <laughs> they actually think that we will some power and authority to uphold patriarchy they don't understand like the origins and the definition fully of what patriarchy is Because if they did, they would understand that throughout history, since the first African was brought to these shores as a as a slave, he has been a victim of patriarchy, not only by white men, but by white women. One of you mentioned earlier that the slave master was going into the cabin and doing what he was doing. His wife was also going into the cabin. Yeah, 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 she was. (laughs) Yeah, she was doing it too. Conky surf. Yep. His wife was doing the exact same thing. Why? Because by proxy of her husband, she was able to exercise a form of patriarchy. Mm-hmm. And that's she really and that's, was. And that's about, you know, just like that's about power for, for exactly. her. That wasn't about her really 
you know, that wasn't necessarily about desire every time. It was about power. I can I can exert my power and my influence. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, don't get it wrong, like, you know, because the white woman has always kind of been pedestalized, right? Like she's she's pure, she's white and whatever. If mm -hmm. he was dipping in the slave cabin, she wasn't getting any type of loving the way that she wanted it. Mm -hmm. She see John in the field, big old strong dude, muscles everywhere. <laughs> Well, you mean to tell me that she ain't get a little hot in the sheets? Come on, man. Come on now. Yeah, no, nah, she she wanted, but she also wanted to exert. <laughs> right, right. No, I, I get it. I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I'm just saying, like, we can't oh, completely rule that out either. You know, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Women, word, they got, you know, they have that lust for black men and 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 whatnot too. You know, but you know, I think in large and also right. You're like. Right. Black yeah, men, have, man. Come on now. Yeah. I think black men also, even yeah. to this day, yeah, have been. Just, um, I mean, can you, can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I, hear you. I think black men too have been looked at as these sexual objects. If it's not as looked at as a sexual predator, yeah. it's something okay. Something, some form of sexual proudness, which to me again is a bit um, devaluing of what an overall man is. Sure. That's you know why like during like lynchings and stuff like that, if you read any of those uh accounts, you'll notice that like they'll they'll remove the reproductive organs from the male. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They remove mm -hmm. the, the, the the penis, the testicles and stuff and, and you know take these things as souvenirs. There's mm -hmm. always been this uh twisted been doing that all throughout history. If you read yeah. about like all um, like Back in the day, they did it to the Indians, like cut mm -hmm. left, right. Like if you read the true accounts and stuff, it's it's pretty graphic. Like, yeah, there's it's, always it's been this bad. weird, like pseudo. It's always been that way. It's, it's nothing new. Homoerotic <laughs> thing when it. No, I'm serious, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was talking it's about always been this homoerotic uh, fascination nah, with you know, you men mean, of color by Europeans. Like there's always been this thing. You see, you remember on Django when you when they had Jamie Fox tied up. And uh, Samuel L. Jackson was talking to him. He's like, "They all, all them dudes wanted to do stuff to you, Johnson. Like everything involved either doing something to you, jump, or doing something to your butt." Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. remember that part? Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I, thankfully, I don't remember that. I remember. I remember that part. But you, but you know, you know where you can see that in the right now. You know where you can see that in the right now. Think about what every comedian says. Yeah. Every comedian will tell. white directors the only one I know that's made it out of it that didn't wear no dresses oh yeah they've have had Terry Crews Terry Crews said they that always producer to grabbed to them take, and, oh, yeah grab this yeah you know and and my be breaking up a bit uh BG yeah. method I thought it was just me but I'm just saying he Yeah, you still can't hear me. Yeah, we, yeah, we hear you now. We heard your dad when you said that. <laughs> okay, I was just saying that you know I don't like the way he the way he came out with it, but at the same mm -hmm. time, yeah. It's, yeah. it's true. It's true. You know, you have these cats out here; they are fascinated, and it, and and it goes way back. It goes into sports. When you look at sports, it, it it's it's just think about the way they talk about the black athletes in sports. They talk mm -hmm. about them like they like they animals, like horses. Right, you know what I mean? It, it's it's crazy, it's crazy. Black but, women too. I mean, the way they talked about yeah. you know Serena, her build and you know uh, just her athleticism and 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 all of these things. You oh, know, like, is yeah, very yeah, like she was a beast or something like that. Right, like, right. Some type of animal. Right. You know, go far back as Sarah. You know, Sarah Bartman and what they did to her, how they dissected oh my God. her. That was that was this. You know. But, all they, this nonsense, man. They just did something recently with the uh, Olympics, to where there was like a couple of sisters. I want. I can't think of it. It, it was um, was it Uganda? Oh yeah, they had. Um, oh yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Much, uh, she had like testosterone or something. Too yeah, much she had too much natural testosterone. Yeah, yeah. But the, but the, yeah. the, the dude that turned himself into a chick was allowed to do it. No, no, no problem. Mm. Right, but 
I mean, you can't help if some, your body's naturally producing a testosterone. I mean, you, but you talking about African African women are not lazy at all. Like they're very like um, um, they, they're always doing something that's like physically like exerting. Right. Um. Yeah, sister was from South Africa, man. She said, uh, uh, so what are the panel's thoughts? Um, we got a comment from Alexis J- James, well, Jimerson. I don't know how to say that. So what are the panel's thoughts on how men fetishize modern black what? How they fetishize modern black what? I don't know what she's saying. Modern black. Um, that's an incomplete statement. Can you can you clarify your statement, your um your your uh, text or your your your, your comment? I mean, if she's if she's referring to the to the degree at which we have embraced some of these negative, you know, sexual stereotypes about black men and black women being hypersexual and you know, all of these things, you know, I would have to agree that to an extent, yes, we have we have embraced those things. Okay, this is what she's saying. I mean, cut you off. What is the panel's thoughts? Let me just put the comment up here. Um, what is the panel's thoughts on how the modern black man seems to have adopted a Sarah Bartman? Um I I, I would I would want more a Sarah I Bartman know. fetish. Oh basically I, I think that what she's saying is um I think what she's saying is how, you know, petite and petite and fitness and all this other stuff is um, not in and this big, big, thick, mm-hmm. you know, Amazonian type black woman is like the thing to go. Um, I just I was I would say this, Alexis, I think it's just more of um, black women being um, hypersexualized. Um, in in my personal opinion, I think um, the BBL type body. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought you was getting at. Um, for one, black women have always been thicker. Mm. Um, that's not black women being thicker is not a new thing. I think you would probably be more correct in saying that all these other races have adopted the yeah, that's Sarah Bartman. Absolutely, yeah, that's what um, it is. Like we've always looked this way. Like most minority women are, are are typically had bigger bigger we're, we're bigger and thicker throughout and stuff. Mm-hmm. And now it's it's being overly sexualized. Like we we talked about this the other day when we were talking about how like like the every, every the, the 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 new thing for women or certain women not to really be going out there trying to get real jobs and be leaders of industry, but it's like mm-hmm. I can stay at home and turn on my webcam and do this and do that and make more money because uh sex sales and whatnot Mm -hmm. but like that they they did like i remember i forgot where it was but it was like a cultural study and stuff where they took like different shaped women and it was like all right you got the the old 1920s woman who was like top heavy but like really really slender didn't have no curves to her hips and stuff then you had a curvy woman you had a short woman, then you had a tall one, and yet, then they had like different people. They they made them like the little uh the little figures that be on the bathroom to, sh- to di- differentiate men and women. And they's like, which and they, and they asked each race of people like, who do you like? Which one would be better? And each one of them picked the curvy woman, but it wasn't necessarily because she was all voluptuous and like her butt was big and she had big boobs and nothing. It's like, nah, she's curvy because like the skinny women. They end up dying in childbirth or whatever. Right. So I was going to go that way. Yeah. But the so for a more built towards having babies and making children and stuff and having good, like healthy families and whatnot because they're, they're more like accustomed. Like, you know how, like, all right, you go from being a woman to a, 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 a girl to a woman. It's like, well, hello? Spread and you, you yeah, get grown now. So hey. it's, 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 yeah, that's what it is. Can you hear us? But I remember something along those lines. But like, I think that's more like a trending thing. Like, everybody wants to be shapely. Everybody wants to have the, 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 the wagon behind them. Everybody's getting those special surgeries. So like, they're it's basically the mommy makeover. But you ain't getting made over. You getting remade or remodeled to look different and more appealing to the masses because 
sex sells and everybody is gravitating towards the, the curvier woman. But it's not, but the thing about it is, and I mean, um, Ghost, it's not nothing okay. new. I'm, no, I know. It's, it's nothing there's new. something I'm, I'm getting ready to put up on the, on, on the screen right now. Right? I just, I'm going to share this picture with you guys. There's something I'm getting ready to put up on the screen. I'm going to share this with everybody. All right. It's just, a, it's a trending thing now. Uh, yeah. Even in the Victorian area, they did it. They made this, the this and the stuff on the back. Yeah. Right, they did these skinny waists and all this. This was just mimicking. This was all just mimicking the natural curvation and natural big butt of black women, like yeah. all of these things, right? Yeah. So well, it's it's the it's the remember too when we talk about black people in general, we are mm -hmm. more muscular anyway, and so right. the biggest muscles on you are in your legs and and, and your buttocks. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're, I'm, we're more muscle. And we have less less fat usually, more muscle. Mm -hmm. So again, it's just a natural thing. It's a natural build. And now we got people out here, like you said, it's not new that they've been trying to mimic that because they don't have that. It's mm -hmm. just like bodybuilders and white people tanning because yeah. skin tone makes you look better. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have color to your skin, you look better. When you yeah. have color to your skin, your muscles show more. You, mm -hmm. you look healthier. So all these things are artificial ways to try to get it. What, what's sad is that we have our black women is doing it too. Right. But again, the more people pay attention to it, the more you're going to have people in, infected with this sickness of doing that. Black women don't need to do anything. They're beautiful mm -hmm. the way they are. Right. They have, they, they have that, that, uh, that advantage over everybody else. And I think the thing too, the one thing about black women are always guinea pigs, Right. Black women have always been used as guinea pigs, and black women have always been used to push, just like black men, to push whatever agenda that they. Okay, <clears throat> let me let me let me say it like this right here. When you promote the Cardi B's, when you promote the Megan Thee Stallions, when you promote um, what's the other other girl name, Nicki Minaj, when you promote all that stuff, right? What you're saying is. Black women are just sexual objects, right? And this is the body type in which you should go for to be more appealing, to be more sexual, uh, attractive to black men, right? <laughs> Do y'all remember that commercial that Joe Biden and them did, the Democratic Party did when they, they was putting out the black men to go vote? And they had that yeah. commercial and they, they, them in the strip club mm -hmm. and whatnot? Yeah, I do. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Very disrespectful. <clears throat> it's very disrespectful. But we oh. allow things like that to happen. Um, and the thing that I tell black women is this, it's, 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 oh man, there's so much I can say on this subject. <laughs> there's so much I can say on this subject. Well, I'll, I'll add that like, you know, to some extent, I think that there's been a, there's been this myth of empowerment through sex, sexuality. Right. Yep. So I think a lot of black women, I mean, not just not just black women. I just think that women in the West, like period, have ex have embraced this whole idea that, you know, I can leverage sexuality in an effort to wield power, gain power, so on and so forth. And I think that, like, it's kind of morphed into this really twisted, this really twisted mindset, you know, that you know, results in, you know, beautiful black women feeling the need to do backdoor Brazilian butt lift procedures and die and do all of this stuff. You know what I mean? Because it's like, well, you know, I know that if I can wield sexual access and just sexuality over men in an effort to gain control and i think it what we're seeing unfortunately is like this perversion of like the beauty of sexuality and the spirituality and the sacredness of sexuality mm -hmm. and you have you know a lot of young young you know you mentioned some figures before i just think that these are like the worst case scenarios of mm -hmm. these mascots that are going around that's embodying good, good this word. empowerment through sexuality mm -hmm. the, these are these mascots that have been pushed into the forefront and you know women young and old are following them 
you know, mm-hmm. and it's it's leading to all of all of these bad choices, man. Like if I hear about another sister going to DR or you know Brazil or whatever and getting fix a flat injected in a behind, <laughs> I'm, I'm I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like I'm just being yeah. honest with you. Like, <laughs> this, like what you doing, K Michelle? Like let's look at oh K Michelle. Oh my god, K Michelle, K Michelle. K Michelle with the, almost with the lost her flip. life. And K yeah. Michelle, I don't know about how y'all brothers feel, but to me. I risk it for K Michelle. <laughs> like <laughs> K Michelle is beautiful. I got a thing for Southern women anyway, but like, yo, she I'm like, why are you doing this to yourself? But why did you thing, do that, that to yourself? None of them have to do it. I mean, nope. look, I mean, okay, like for instance, I, I'ma take, I'm gonna go further back. I'm gonna go to somebody who, you know, I, I it comes up all the time. Me and my wife was talking about it the other day. Look at Lil' Kim right now. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, okay. look like herself at all. All right, so, but 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 Here. check it out. We, the reason why she even came up because we was uh we was watching old videos, or whatever. So crush on you comes on, and I'm like, she should stop. Mm. I mean, I think she might have had a little bit of work done, not no body work, but maybe a little face work done then, maybe. But she shouldn't have been doing nothing else. She was fine right there. But but that's what I'm saying. You know, it's a sickness, and the sickness that started with just a few people. It's invaded our whole country, especially our culture. Yeah, this is out here talking about they got to compete against this other sister. They got a big booty. You know, so come on, get out of here, man. You right. you good enough the way you are. You yeah. good enough. Man, you know, my you, wife is always going to be somebody that got something something bigger or whatever that poke out more. But it, it, you good the way you are because hey, look, I'm sorry. Some of them I see them like yo, that's too. I couldn't even deal with all that. <laughs> you know, I just can't. I can't even guess. Yeah. Out of, that's out of my league, right? Yeah, that's out of my much. league, man. That's yeah. my pay grade right there. Can't mess with it. That's out of my state. Anybody has been to the continent? Yeah. yeah. African yeah. women, man. What's it? South Africa, Uganda, mm. some women, Nigeria. <laughs> You go to certain parts, man. The women are stacked, bro. And yeah, they are. All muscle. They, they are. They're it's, cut. It's all too, right? solid. <laughs> right, right. I told you, man. They, they, man. My mother-in-law would get up at like three thirty, four o'clock in the morning, and I, you know, I was, I was laying on the floor, um, because me and my wife, we was just, my wife was pregnant at the time. We was in Nigeria. We was in uh, um Accra, and we laying on the floor. And she was sitting up a certain way because her back and stuff was hurting. And it was like three. I looked at my phone. It was like 3.30 in the morning. My mother-in-law was up cleaning the house, fetching water from the whale, all of this stuff at 3.30. And I'm talking about moving like heavy stuff like this. This When I tell you guys, the water that she was fetching, it was a trash can full of water. And I'm not talking about a kitchen trash can. I'm talking about a that trash can. That you, 30 gallon, big boy. It was like one of them 30 gallon dude, and she was filling this sucker up with nothing but water, right? And then the generator, she was moving the generator by herself. Now, my mother in law is about 5'3, maybe a buckle five, right? Buck 10. And she's moving this stuff by herself. I had to get up. I was like, Mom, I, I can help you. No, son, I, I do this all the time. It's no problem. Yeah. You know, and they're moving like this is how they do it, right? Um, it, it's, it's so crazy because, but it's not, it's not just the body, it's the hair, mm-hmm. you know, black women have beautiful natural hair. Yeah. Right. And billions and billions of dollars are getting made off black women every year because somehow they've been told that their hair is ugly. The one, the most sexiest thing to me is to see a black woman in her natural hair. Like yeah, with locks sure. or they twisted or like my wife has really hurt her hair. It's natural. It's really curly. Right. Hey, let That's me interject sexy. real quick. Let right. me interject real quick. Y'all realize that UPS had a policy that just now got changed that black women couldn't wear their hair natural. Right. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's, I was going to add that point The you know, the, and you, just to connect it with the overall conversation around integration, part of integrating was mm. that you had to conform. 
And so we're in a society where our women are not in order to look professional, in order to look civilized, in order to look, you have to adhere to this image. Mm -hmm. I was watching a TED talk with um, Chimamanda Adichie, the uh, Nigerian writer, Mm -hmm. who I think is so fine. But anyway, (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm, I'm watching her and she's um, talking about, I guess it's a new book or maybe a, a most recent book or whatever, but she was talking about how if Michelle Obama wore her nat- wore natural hair and not processed or whatever, Obama would not have won the presidency. Mm, he wouldn't, know. Mm-hmm. And it made me think, like, just about the far-reaching e- impact even until, even up until 2022, mm-hmm. where, you know, that has influenced the way we look and how our women especially are validated or there's a lack thereof, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that we can shout it to the rooftops, us men, black men, we like your natural hair and this, this, that, and the third. But in order to navigate the society in this space, there's a louder voice that's telling yeah. them, well, in order for you to gain access, you got to look like this. You got to look like this. Right. I, that, and, and just like you said, it's, it's not even new. It's it's. That's why in the 19, you know, in the, in the early 20th century, cats was getting their hair burnt. Yeah, and his mm-hmm. brothers was doing that. Right. Burning their hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hair curls and whatnot. Yeah, and, and, and that's that, and that's why I keep saying that about so every, low. At every <laughs> turn, there's another card that's played. Yeah. There's another card that's played to try to keep us in place. Yeah. Every time you try to loose yourself, free yourself, sisters out here trying to free themselves. And they started going back natural. My wife did it. And so I remember when, when my wife did it, I went to work. She said, I got a surprise for you when you come home. <laughs> so, so when I came home, she cut our hair off. You know, and I'm looked at her like big okay, child. I'm, yeah. I'm good. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? And and I and I am good. I've been good. She has been that way. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And it's affected my my family in a way that like my daughter, her hair is natural. You know what I mean? Whatever. So it's all good. But as you say. You try to free yourself, you lose yourself, and you have other people on the other side say, well, you know that's not going to work in the business place, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We can't, you know, we can't work with that. And like I said, UPS just changed their policy not very long ago. I want to tell you how long ago it was, but I know it was sometime in the middle of like last year or early the year before, something like that. They just mm-hmm. changed it. But look, but but even look past that, you could look at the New York Yankees. The New York Yankees, when George Steinbrenner was the owner, if you came to the Yankees, you had to get a haircut. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. You know, no locks. Up. You got to chop all that off. Yeah. You know, so it's just, and like I, I, I'll go here, and I, I got to get ready to go. But like I told you, uh, uh, Katie, I told you about why we love Lamar Jackson, right? Uh huh. Lamar Jackson because he one of us. Lamar Jackson uh-huh. won't conform. Lamar Jackson is the first brother to come out there with his hair like that. And won't change it. He won't change the way he talk. He won't change nothing. That's part of the reason why he's public enemy number one on sports radio and sports talk. And they always look for something to criticize that brother about because he won't conform. That's true. I'm, and I'm, I'm telling you, it's going to stay that way. I hope he don't change. And that's why I'm rooting for him to win, to win a Super Bowl while he's like this. Uh-huh. But they try to wear you down. They try to wear you down. I mean, because even when Michael Vick was out, at first Mike Vick was like that too. Mike Vick eventually changed. He did. He he changed because he had no choice. He had no choice, but I mean, they made him the poster child of dog fighting. Yeah. But, right. but, but you know and, what the dog fight thing was about, right? Dog uh, fighting thing was about drugs. The dog fighting thing was about some of them dudes that came over there fought dogs with him. Was was heavy in the game, uh-huh. and they wanted Mike Vick to get people to flip on those guys. He uh-huh. would not do it. Man, that's so, bad news, though. I mean, that that town. What is it called? What it, what is it called? What uh, uh, Newport News? Newport News. That's bad. You don't do that stuff up there. Them dudes. They they own some. They boy. They own one. Like yo, I'm just saying, man. You know, when when the law, when we talk about federal 
and they want something and they got something to hold hold over your head. What I love about Mike Vick that he didn't flip, but at the same time, his family flipped on him. Yeah. Sure did. You know, so it is what it is. But but all I'm saying is even he had to change. You know, Mike Mike Vick was out there, braids, all that good stuff. And when Mike Vick came out, no braids, short haircut, a lot more subdued. Mike Mike was in a suit. Mike uh was extremely uh particular about how he what he spoke and how he chose his words. Had to you know, rebrand himself, man. He had to rebrand himself, man. And 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 it's some people right now that still call for his head. Yeah, yeah they still gonna call and, for but just like you got the other dude that's from the same area, DMV, that's from Virginia, AI never conformed. And look yeah. what look how they treat AI though. AI's a forgotten superstar. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. We don't forget. We don't forget. This, but you this, know what I'm saying. I want to highlight this comment. What do y'all think about this? I was looking at that. I was I was waiting for a pause. Versus bring it back assimilation. To the, uh, to, 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 to the, to the, the question. It is the reality. Integration and whatnot. I looked up. I just looked up. I thought it was five, but it's actually seven seven laws of uh, assimilation and it talks about all this stuff and it's basically like what we were just basically hitting on without saying like cultural or behavioral assimilation structural assimilation marital assimilation educational right. assimilation attitude receptional assimilation behavior receptional assimilation and civic assimilation this is all little different things it's like we had to act a certain way we had to had to had to play the roles that we've seen other people play. Like, this is what the people yeah. in society are doing. This is what the, this is what we're modeling ourselves after. This is what we are identifying ourselves as. This is how we are carrying ourselves. This is what we're saying. Right. Stuff like that. This is how we are integrating into society. Right. What not. So <clears throat> And to that point, I think that this is why you have like so many white people that are really afraid as this country continues to brown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No longer will we have to assimilate into the structure that you uh, have designed, because, because these no cultures, the, these cultures are going to bring their own values. They're going to exactly. bring their own image, and I think for so long this this nation has been used to people doing it this particular way: white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant. Yeah, exactly. This is the structure, right? We're no longer mm -hmm. the 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 minorities. They're like they're yeah. pretty much outnumbered. They've been out well, for a pretty long much. Time. And so Let me that's why they get so upset. Speak English, you know, to, to yeah. Spanish speaking or yeah. other because they're so used to or they'll travel abroad. <laughs> I've seen yeah. it myself. They'll they, go abroad and expect the the people in the country that they're going yeah. to to speak English well, or to conduct that's themselves that's a certain way. It's like, so where does this attitude come from? Yeah. Well, they they've always had the attitude. But let me throw let me throw another curveball. You know what I'm saying? Because we're talking about about you know the numbers right so the numbers have always been in their favor they've always been the majority and they're trying to hold on to that at all costs at this point in time there's some states in the united in these united states that already was ahead of the game one of those states is kentucky kentucky if you have a if you are have a white father and a black child i mean and a black wife and they have a child all this time that child was always known as black kentucky changed i don't know how many years ago that child's known as white. The father's white. Mm, that's interesting. in the census. That's in the census. Interesting. There's other states that's trying to adopt that. Yeah. That's no different from you know them making differentiations between ethnicity, right? So you'll have like someone from Latin America, Spanish-speaking countries, or whatever. They can actually claim white, mm -hmm. right? Okay. A lot of you know Arabs, Asians. Uh, yeah, if it's not like if it's not top. really clear. Yeah. They can actually claim white, yeah, or or other, <laughs> or other, right, or other. <laughs> There's so mm -hmm. many distinctions now. Yeah, well, it's just like the North Africans being known as white. Mm -hmm. It's know? about it's a numbers um, game, but that I find and, that interesting. I got to read up on that. In Alabama, yeah, Alabama. No, uh, Kentucky, Kentucky. I got to read up yeah. on that. That's interesting. But, I, and I would bet you any money that's that's the states that's going to start at first. It's going to be most of these southern states. You know, it's pick on it, pick up on that, and do that. But they trying to hold on to the numbers. They need the numbers. It's just yeah. like, it's just like, oh, okay. Now we got this voting rights rights problem because mm -hmm. Georgia flipped, 
Yeah. So, because Georgia flipped, now everybody wants to change the vote, voting rights. What they used to do is just change the lines. They changed the districts yeah. to make sure they had enough people to get the people in office they wanted. But now whole states are flipping. So they say, nah, we got to change it different. We got to make sure they don't vote. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. That's all I can say. It's crazy. Hey, listen, y'all, I, I'm enjoying the conversation, but I got to get off. Um, next time, invite me again, man. Invite me again. Hi, uh, BG Method. We appreciate you from going coming through, man. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, and all your, but you can hear it. Ah, I'm getting yeah. tongue twisted, y'all. Nah, man, I appreciate I learned, you for coming I, through. <laughs> I learned a lot from y'all, and uh, I mean, everybody that's that's contributed, everything, uh, the people that's uh, leaving comments. I I can't respond with a comment. Some sometime I wanted to type up there, but but I read all the comments, and I appreciate all the words being said, all the questions being a lot of smart questions, intelligent yes. questions. Yes, very good conversation we have it. And, you know, I mean, more of us need to have it and just need to understand what the next next step is. That's the thing. We got to get ahead of the game, start making moves to, you know, and I don't want to say come combat, but really take care of ourselves and really hold on to our identity. Yeah. You know what I mean, well, see, but I think that we've lost our identity outside of. Um, I just think we've lost our identity when we actually integrate it. Mm. We, we're what they've told us that we're going to be. That's why you can't wear your hair a certain way. That's why if you wear your hair natural, you're not conforming. So it's like, okay, well, who are you to wear your hair in, in locks? Or well, who are you? I, I I feel you. I feel you. And, I, and I, man, I want to I want to keep going. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm. But I always tell you this. I always tell you this, Kay. I'm my father's son. And mm-hmm. you know what I, what I mean when I say that. You're right. Man, I'm my father's son. These mm-hmm. cats out here, this government, all they can say what they want. And I'm 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 just and I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I know there's not a whole lot like me. I all know right. that. But I think I think you like that. You know what I'm saying? I think there's other brothers out there that's like that and sisters too. They are they they are their mother's child or their father's child, and they pick that up mm-hmm. off me. My my pops did not conform. You know, he knew how to navigate in this world, but he didn't conform, mm. you know, and that made people scared of him. Right. You know, and, and I know I run across people that sometimes they're scared of me. Yeah, yeah you be mean mugging too, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, but I'm just saying, you have to, you, you kind of have to, I mean, I, look, I, I'll leave you with this one last story and I really do have to get off, but okay, so I'm at work and 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 I have a guy that works with me, and he's Asian. We real mm-hmm. tight. We real cool. And there's a white lady that around the corner. She wanted to ask me to do something. But she didn't want to ask me. So she asked him. Mm-hmm. Right? She didn't want to approach me at all. So I said to him, I said, look, he said, I know what you're going to say. I said, what you mean? He said, I'm kind of getting to know you, so I know what you're going to say. You about to tell me she got to ask you if you're going to even do it. I said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I said, she's going to have to come talk to me. I said, she's not going to ask you and I'm going to do it. I'm going to automatically say no if she's going to continue along that, you know, that path. She's going to have to talk to me. And that's to anybody. And he said, nah. He said, I kind of told her that. He said, but I decided to come here just to test my theory to see if that's what she was going to say. Mm-hmm. I said, well, yeah, until she asks me, she's not even going to get an answer. I'm not even going to acknowledge it. You know, and that's just the way I am. You know what I mean? Don't don't assume that, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a you know, I'm gonna bite your head off because of the way I am, but I, at the same time, I'm angry black man. man. Yeah, you know, what I'm, saying? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just my own man. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's it. That's how, mm. and I think that's how we have to operate because, as as you said a long time ago, like where I live, that's my castle. That's my house. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's my wife. Those are my kids. Mm-hmm. You know, I take care of them. We talk about the church and the church getting in your business. That's why I don't go? Yeah, because you know, I'm just like, look, yo. You're a pastor. I'm a man. You can give me some direction and I might go and research it, but you're not going to come to my house and make the rules in my house. Otherwise, we got another situation going and I don't right. think you're going like to happen. I don't think you don't like wow. how it's going to go down. <laughs> like, yeah, so you do and have dominion. But, um, all right, team, we're going to let you go, man. We'll continue our conversation for a little while longer. Yeah, man, we, we, we'll catch up again. I know you'll, you'll, you'll let me know what went down. Y'all take care. Yeah, you know, man. Appreciate, you know, appreciate your contribution. Yeah, I appreciate you coming through, man. Um, I want to highlight this comment that yeah. Corinne. Let's do that. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah. That she says, she says, how much racism do you as an African-American man slash female face in the United States on a daily basis? And why is it still such a current issue in some countries more than others in your opinion? Mm. Um, it's a good question. Very good. That's a very good question. Let me keep it highlighted. Um, Ishmael said something earlier, and I think it's really about that. I think it's capitalism. I think it's about um, the almighty dollar. Um, on a on a regular basis, I would say on a daily basis. I'm trying to because my I'm kind of scatterbrained at night. I don't know what's going on, but um, <clears throat> on a daily basis, the racism that that I face. Me myself, if I face any, it's it's more covert than overt. Yeah. Um. Now, um, you just have to <clears throat> pay attention to certain certain signs. You don't really have people that gonna come directly out and say, you know, I'm treating you like this because you're an N-word or this right there. But you know, you may see it when you know you get pulled over by the police or you're walking down the street. And a white person crosses the street, you know, you may see things like that. You know, those are those um, racial biases, I would say more than anything. Um, but like I said, I think that the reason why racism is, is, is still a major problem in the United States, for one, I believe capitalism. Two, this country was founded on racism. And the civil rights movement was only like 60, 70 years ago. It wasn't a, a, a long time. So you have a lot of the old guard still making the policies. You have a lot of those boomers and, you know, they grew up in a time to where, you know, this is how, this is where the world was. And those are your policymakers. Right. So there's nothing really that's going to change. Like we can't even agree that, you know, police unfairly target black people over here. (laughs) We can't even come to an agreement about that, even though we have the numbers to prove it. Right. Right. It's still something of, well, they'll say that the officers have a right to come home to their families as though you don't have a right to go home to your family. Like a traffic stop shouldn't lead to murder. It shouldn't lead to that because there's in, there's implicit biases or racial biases that let's just say um, Steve grew up in an all white neighborhood and everything that he know about. He's a white guy and they grew up in an all white neighborhood and everything he knows about a black guy he's seen off television. Right. And. It's a, it's a, the black guy's a thug or the black guy's a robber and all this other whatnot. And so you put him on a police force, you train him and you set him in a black neighborhood. He's never had any contact with black people. He doesn't know how black men really are. He doesn't know that, you know, what the signs to look for when black men is presented to be a threat or not, because me and Alex and me and Alex could be sitting here, um, having a conversation and we can amp up a little bit and to us, we just going back and forth. But I've seen white dudes, when you amp up on them a little bit, they get really nervous. Mm-hmm. Like, if, if you just raise your voice just a, just a smidgen, them dudes almost pissing their pants. Yeah, now, these, now you're angry, irate. When you're just increasing, you're, you're speaking with passion. You're just making right. a point. Or if on the flip side, they get aggressive. They try right. to match that aggression. They try to match that aggression. Mm-hmm. These are your police officers yeah. that have that mentality of you know this black person when they raise their voice like this they're challenging my authority right so um there's already a natural intimidation factor there and to not to mention that stuff has been ingrained from them since they was growing up that a lot of black men are automatically a threat so you have a lot of people the old guard teaching the new guard things that it just won't die do you, do you get what I'm saying? So when you have a country that was found off the backs of racism, found off the backs of, okay, because you are this color, not because you are this ethnic group, which is very key because Africans are from different ethnic groups. Right. But because you are this color and it was edicts passed down by the Catholic church saying, because you are this color and because you're from this land, you are not a human being. You can be subjugated. You are pagan worshiper. All of these things. You need to be Christianized, right? You can't get rid of that just by, you know, snapping your finger. It doesn't work that way, right? So 
that's in my opinion. I don't know what you guys think. Go ahead, Ishmael. I'll let you go ahead. No, nah, I mean, I you know, I I think he hit on a lot of a lot of a lot of great points. I mean, for me, it's it's. I definitely agree with the fact that it's very over uh, covert. Um, I pick it apart, man. You know, I, I pick it apart into the various components that I think comprise racism. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm looking at power, how power, who has access to power, who wields mm-hmm. power, what that looks like. Then I'm looking at prejudice, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what that looks like. Um, I to the to the to the person's question. I experience microaggressions all the time, <clears throat> all the time. I'm you know I'm I'm here in New York City, New York and um, it, yeah, it's not so much in your face, nah, you know what I mean. But it's it's in you know um, I'm going to uh, intentionally pull the door behind me when I know you're coming behind me trying to get into the same building, right? Mm. Or um, I'm going to, um, you know, uh, walk away from the service counter when I see you approaching Mm. after I just service, you know, someone else. Or I'm going to take 20 minutes to sit you and your spouse um, or your partner or your friend or whoever, right? I'm going to do these things. I'm not going to converse with you in uh, the staff lounge. Um, it, it, it's these type of mm. things. And, you know, to that point, to, to her question, um, that happens to me all the time. All the time. I'm six foot two, 230 pounds. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> um, yeah, need I say more? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, so it, it, it happens, it happens, yeah. it happens all, and, and I'm in the gym four to five times a week. You know what I mean? It, ha- mm. it happens all the time. So you look like you took the hair. super soldier serum. <laughs> <laughs> I can shave Isaiah my hair. Bradley and whatnot. I can lower my voice, <laughs> right? I can round my shoulders. I could do everything possible. But, you know, I'm still perceived this way. And my sons are going to be perceived this way. And my grandsons mm-hmm. are going to be perceived this way. It's, you know, to your point, brother, like, it's just woven into the fabric. Yeah. It is the peculiar mm-hmm. institution that is indicative of this country. You know, I've traveled mm-hmm. all over this world. And I'm not saying racism doesn't exist. It just takes different forms. As it's practiced here in America, it, it's unlike anything it's unlike anything else I've experienced in Europe or Asia, or whatever. So, I mean, you know, to that I point. Was, I, I, will, I will say this. I don't mean to cut you off, Ishmael. When no, I was no in the app world, mm. when I was in the app world, it, it was a little bit, it was it was on par. You um, thought it was on par? I, I, well, I'm not going to say it was, but it was up there because they were just mm-hmm. outright just cut in front of you in line. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you be sitting there. You can be waiting there for there for forever, and you can be next in line. If another Arab walks up, they're gonna service that Arab first, right? Um, right. you know, my wife when they she flew from um, UAE to Egypt, you know, they delayed her flight, flight, and then all the Nigerians on their flight got treated like they were less than. Mm. You know, what I mean, so. But you know, and, and I think we hit on this on last last video. We talked about something that we don't bring up very often is the, the Arab slave trade. We don't really talk about that, and yeah. the racial biases and, and and the bigotry that comes behind that stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, America, and even not just America, but in SA in South Africa, where you had apartheid, you know, to where it was just. It was so crazy, and even when it was even worse, is what when you try to reverse it, they consider that racism. Right. Um, what's up, Gerard? What's good, man? What's good? He said, um, this is Jennifer. She made this comment. She said, Booker T. Washington said the blacks should rely on themselves for self-help. Do y'all agree? If so, how? Absolutely. Yeah. 
Absolutely. The only thing that I disagree right with the Booker T. Washington, though, is, you know, that there needs to be a degree of placating, you know, to mm. to, to mm-hmm. whites to kind of prove mm-hmm. that we are just as civilized. You saw that identity politics play out a lot in certain generations, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, my grandfather, he always wore a suit, always wore a suit. Mm-hmm. Go to the go to the little general store up the street or whatever. Grandpa's in a suit. Like Grandpa, why are you, <laughs> why are you, you know, in a suit? And it was just important for him to show us to, sh- you know, for us to show whites that we were just as civilized, just as classy, just as cultured as they were. And that was his way of, you know, putting that out there. Mm-hmm. I think as generations got, you know, went on. You know, we didn't play, we didn't, not all of us necessarily played those games, but, you know, the rift between Du Bois and Washington, you know, had really a lot to do with two things, class and then identity politics. Uh But I definitely fall in line with Washington's um, sentiment that, listen, we we, got to get it out of the mud. We got to build it ourselves and we got to maintain it, you know. And I, I do think to your earlier points about how we kind of have sacrificed for quote unquote access through integration, I think that it would do us a lot uh, better to go back to some of the principles that Washington was 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 putting forth out there. Land ownership, you know, building our communities, not having to rely on you know, whites or, or others, I, I think we should get back to that. Absolutely. Because okay. we will never fully integrate into the society. Now, with, with that being said, Ishmael, that goes back to my point that I was making last what, week and a half ago. In order for you to be able to do that, you got to have families. Absolutely. Communities order, begin you, with the family. The yeah. Communities begin with the family and you're not going to get black women to, as 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 Mr. Uh, BG Method said earlier, to get off the titty, <laughs> you know, this, this government. <laughs> That's what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. You're not gonna be able to get. <laughs> he's like, man, we on the titty, you know, <laughs> which is breastfeeding, huh? Right, we breastfeeding. And you, you're talking about. It's like what I said with the NFL about the NFL a week or two ago. You're talking about giving up power. Mm-hmm. Right. And for what? You know, this ain't the Quakers. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You're, t- you're talking about giving up power and you're talking about giving up a sure thing, you know, um, where you have to, uh, you're talking about the women have to come and learn how to trust their men all over again. Yeah. yeah. And I just don't see it as possible. I just, I don't see it as possible. Not with these, no. Maybe. A generation of women from now, but I don't see it as possible. And I think that, like I said, I don't think we're going to be able to do. I and mean, it sounds very, you know, doom and gloom. Negative, but it's it's it is it's the it's the current climate and situation of what's what's going on now. Yeah. So two things. I'm gonna go ahead and respond to Corin about the, her question earlier. Is like how much racism do you see as an American man in, in the mm-hmm. United States on a daily basis? And what y'all said is basically re- reiterating on the same points. It's very, it's very covert right now. It's not out in the open now because everyone has a camera. Everybody is 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 coining trending phrases and, and and stuff. Everybody's a Karen, or I don't know what the name is for 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 the men that basically do the same things that Karen do. Mm-hmm. And it's more so in our country because this is where it was. This is where this is basically where it started. Not not all of us are. Are fortunate enough to travel freely outside right. the country, like for like like nothing related to work and stuff. Right. Like, I was outside of the country too, but I was in the army. I didn't go for uh, anything pleasurable or on my own or vacation type and stuff. And uh, I think I wrote down some stuff, and it's like the same. The reason that it is that the way it is here is because the same people who were in power back then and made these rules. Are basically in the same p- power now. They just passed it along. Facts. Their- Facts. Like it, it's getting a little harder, or they're 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 slowly 
slowly dying out or they're slowly, slowly changing their tactics and who they're made up of because now we are so much more mixed than we than than ever before and stuff. It's like mm-hmm. it, like you can see it just like how we was talking about earlier. But every everything is a trending thing. Everything is following what it is, and you have to adapt or die. So if you don't mm-hmm. adapt to what's going on now, you basically die out like the dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. The other thing about like the her question is about I wrote down area and I wrote down like triggers. It's like what causes this stuff to happen. It really depends on the area that you're in. Right. If you live in an area like where you you're from, we're from New York. I was born in Connecticut, so it's it was it was very it had because because of where I'm from, your racism had to be like very very like purposely done and in my face for it to even trigger anything with me. Right. But where I was from, there wasn't a whole bunch of uh. If you, we were military, so military basically goes everywhere. But like where I was from, there wasn't a whole bunch of uh of of minority people that weren't there based off of being in the military. So it was, it was very little civilian people that weren't looking like everybody else. And in Connecticut, I went a whole year being the only black person in my school or, or in my class or whatever. And it was didn't dawn on me until we started talking about like slavery and history and whatnot. And I was like, well, damn, everybody's asking me questions like I was there. I was like, I'm learning this for the first time, just like you. I don't know what to tell you. And it's just like history and lack of knowledge. People act a certain way because like what you said earlier, Katie, like, like I remember in 2001 joining the army and meeting people that had never been around black people. Their only black experience or minority experience was been from what was told to them or what they saw on TV. And then like having that whole light bulb moment, like, damn, you're not at all like what I thought you would be based on the old information or the old knowledge or what the history tells me, which I could spitball into some other stuff talking about like what's currently being taught as history now and today and stuff. And about the other thing, let's, let's, let's uh, scroll down a little bit about what she was talking about. Like Jennifer was talking about DB Du Bois and the community and what was, that's what I was saying earlier with your first question about the effects, how they have been good or bad for our community. It's like, I think since we basically now have our foot in the door, it beca- in the door, it's on us to, teach the people that we are around or like, like you are my circle. Okay. You are, we are all our circle, however big our circle, however small, our circle, it doesn't matter. This is my circle mm-hmm. of, of uh, let's say like, I got five people in my circle, but you're my circle, but your, your circle could include some other people that are not in my circle. So it's like the reach one, teach one mentality. So if we all police ourselves or we all hold ourselves to a higher esteem or higher regard or a higher standard of living and like ishmael's grandfather did is like i'm setting the example for you because this is how i carry myself so that people have to come at me a certain way they have to deal with me a certain way sort of what on my terms like i'm a fighter so i've been told by people that don't know me personally it's like you give off like a vibe it's like hey don't say nothing crazy to this dude don't do don't be outwardly disrespectful or something bad some it's not gonna go your way because of how i carry myself unknowingly because i fight and i'm that's just me i i've had to been told about it and then oh man i have to sit and relax and give off something to make people feel comfortable comfortable, just like you i'm not as big as you but like my personality and the vibe i give off is like man i always i talked to a dude the other day he's like dude i was talking to him about like cartoons and, and 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 drawn he's like man you you gave off a vibe that like i just thought she was pissed all the time and i was like no nah, i'm just at work this is my work <laughs> and then, but like I, I, I get down and vibe i just didn't have a reason to to open up and show you that so that's the reason for it but i got a little ahead of myself but like yeah with the with the communities and everything like taking everything i think it's on us and i think it's on us as like the now we're the old men of our community for lack of a better word is yeah. on us to show the people below us what it is and why we can we do certain things like again I, I, talking about myself like i'm like the elite so to speak of my demographic because i don't have a prison record i don't have any outside children i don't have any debt i own all my stuff and like i i am sort of like a uh uh i'm i'm the 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 voice of reason in all my circles. Like, nah, 
I should go to him for advice because he's he's level headed. I've never seen him mad. I've never seen him in trouble. He seems to always make good decisions. Let me talk to him about my situation. And then that will just in turn make things better for me. Or like he will come up with a solution that I yet did not see. Anyway, Natural leader. Yeah. And that's that's what it is. And I was like, and I'm not doing it on purpose because like, yes, I could be doing more, but I'm 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 happy right now operating as like a, a B student where I could be doing A plus and extra credit work. I was like, nah, I don't want to do that because I don't want to take on all the extra or I don't want to do all that just yet. I think brother like it's it's duplicating, you know, it's 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 inspiring and motivating, like you said, the people <clears throat> Not not just the people underneath us, but the people who are standing side by side with us, you know, to follow similar similar examples. I you know I I have a little bit more faith in our sisters. I, I guess yeah, you have way more faith uh, in them. Yeah, than I do. I, do. Um, I feel that if um, if there was a par if there was a shift, and you know, men such as ourselves would um, somehow become the loud majority, right? Because I think what, right now the image that is often perpetuated right about now. black men is coming from a loud minority. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we, you know, were somehow able to just openly challenge that and overcome it and lead by example, I think that our women will follow suit. I just, I, you know, I have see, faith. I, see, I, I know, I know, brother. I know, <laughs> I know. I have faith in us, in our women. I'm sorry. Okay, I can't let go. I, I can't I, let go. Um, I just think that um, it's important for those black men and women who are on the same page. See, you're going to be surprised about what I'm about to say, Ishmael. Okay, I think okay. it's that those black men need to pair with those black women. Mm -hmm. who share the same values, mm -hmm. who are on the same page in terms of, you know, family building, vision for the community, progression, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. They need to come together, right? And I think that it starts there. If we can duplicate those relationships and, you know, community you know i think in the last conversation we had not everybody's gonna make it and not everybody should make it right, right? but i do think that um you know uh, making a loud enough taking a loud enough stance to counter what has been um what has been the image of black male black female uh relationships and this this understanding of what the black family looks like and what it can be and what it is, I, I think that these things can be challenged. Um, mm. Just one family at a time, you know, not get so caught up in all of this, you know, gender warring and, and all of this stuff or whatever. Like, no, you know, those people who are on the same page that are that are willing to be vulnerable and come to the table in good faith sharing value, sharing vision, willing to do the work, they should come together and then we multiply. We replicate that. So go ahead, man. Hit, give me, give it to me. I know you can. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Hold on. I know you're going to hit me with it. So go ahead. <laughs> this is what I say. Um, Here's what I say. Let me see. Can I collectively gather my thoughts? Because I've been like, I feel, I feel like I've been all over the place. I want to answer this comment that Jen says. She says, "So the black men in the community need to step up." Now, this is going to coincide with my response to you, Ishmael. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I want to respond to that question after you're done. <laughs> okay, right. cool, cool. I do think black men in the community need to step up, but not in the way that is often portrayed. Okay. Right. I think that black men need to make better decisions about who they choose to take on as a mate and reproduce and build okay. families with. Because if you marry someone that has the mentality of dependency on the United States government, meaning they're going to have that mentality of the overseer, right? Your 
you will never have control over your family. And in order to set the course right, the man has to be at the wheel. Point blank, period. Right? Okay. Um, the, the, here's, the, here's the thing. When we talk about um, black women in this, in this community, one of the biggest problems with black women in this community is they don't know what black masculinity even looks like, right? Agreed. When they're shown an alpha male, you know, a guy that kind of pokes his chest out and speaks with a deeper voice, um, you know, he's that, you know, prototypical protector, right? Um, the, proto the disciplinary and the stern man, right? When they shown that guy, he's a threat. When they shown the milder, more soft-spoken, reasonable, calculating guy, he's gay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not talking about he's actually gay. I'm just saying this is what they say. He's gay. Right. Right? So he's not even taken serious. Um, the only man that is actually really taken serious in this community to where black women latch themselves to is the thug. The bad guy. He's the he's the he's, and Ray Rays. Right. <laughs> That's what they call him, the Pookies and Ray Rays, right? No, no pun intended, Ray Ray. But that's what they call them, the Pookie, the Pookie and the Ray Rays, right? So and and to, and to me, I don't even like them them guys being called Pookie and Ray Rays as something derogatory. Yeah, I'm just clowning. Right. You know what I'm saying? I know you can just clown them, but yeah. this is what they say. Like these dudes are really the they are the product of the environment, right? And I had a lot of them cats look out for me, man. Why well, I didn't end up being one of those dudes in jail because a lot of them was like, nah, you got too much to 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 uh, live for. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to let you fight. We're not going to let you get in this situation. You know, black men have always looked out for me. Yeah, same here. You know what I'm saying? They've always looked out for me. Even when they knew that they weren't headed anywhere fast, they still made sure I'm not going to let this derail you. And black men do that. More yeah, they do. Our, they do that a lot. They black men are protectors. Yeah, we right? are. Um, and the problem is, is that it's not that I don't have faith in African American women. I just think that the environment is not going to change fast enough mm -hmm. for them to come back to the man and come under submission to him. And I think that's the only way that the women that was descendants of slaves, mm -hmm. ADOS women, are going to come back to black men is that there's going to have to be an environmental shift, right? COVID was an example of an environmental shift. And mm -hmm. you start seeing so many sisters start to say, let me pay attention to what these brothers got to say. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think that was a microcosm. So what? That's because they didn't have any choice to listen. Everything was shut down. They couldn't go to work. They were stuck. Mm. But that's yeah. the thing. But that's the thing about Western society. Western society is an illusion. It really is. Like you don't have to go out and and and, and catch the chicken in the yard and wring his neck. You don't have to go um, um, harvest your corn or your or your rice and stuff like that. If if you don't do it properly and don't store everything, you're not going to eat tonight. It's a society that is based on you know, convenience, right? And when you fill the society with nothing but convenience and you take away, how do I am trying to say this? When you make everything convenient and you don't have to really work for anything, you know, you... Breed weak people. Exactly, exactly. I thank you for finishing my thought because my brain is like on vacation. You know what I'm saying? My brain was like, I'm going to be over here chilling when you get done doing this podcast. <laughs> you know, um, it's, I'm, a, I'm a professional artist, right? And when I started my art career, you know, what was presented to me wasn't traditional. It was digital, right? And so not only was digital like okay you know everything's going digital yada 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 but there were so many shortcuts with digital right you can literally take a photoshop if you, if if you're painting quote unquote 
excuse me, quote unquote, painting somebody on Photoshop of, or Illustrator or Corel Painter. You could literally take take a picture of someone and trace over a layer of that person. Now, when you trace over that layer of somebody, then you can start, quote unquote, painting the picture, right? If you don't learn how to draw a head or make your face proportionate or and all of those things, if you don't learn how to do that with your, your Lord Jesus, if you don't learn how to do that with your traditional skills, um, I, uh, let me just say it like this right here, because my brain is just on vacation. I'm I'm serious. It basically cheapens the experience, right? Or it 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 doesn't. Being a traditional artist, you have to have certain skills. You just have to, right? You have to know how to do, um, um, you have to know how to do, um, God dang it, shoot, picture composition. You have to know how to create a focal point. You have to know um, atmospheric perspective. You have to know how to proportion things, right? If you're on a computer and if you want to proportion something, you can just click enlarge or decompress. There's no, there's, you're not getting any really any real world experience in that. So when somebody comes and you say, Hey, can you do this picture for me? I want it this way. You're not going to know how to do it because you're, so, thank you, Jennifer. It's basic fundamentals. That's what she's saying. Thank oh, yeah. you so much. Yeah. If you don't know how to do those things, right? Then let's just say EMP happens. Everything yeah. digital shut down, right? And you have to be a traditional artist now. Now you have no skills. All your skills, everything that you learn has been made obsolete. All the cheat sheets that you have been made obsolete. Most people do not know how to grow their own food. Most people don't even know how to repair a hole in their clothes. Most people don't know how to fish. Most people do not know how to do none of those things. And I'm saying this, I'm going somewhere with what I'm saying, right? So when you build a society and you make everything convenient for people, there's no really, no real skill it's okay, yeah, you can get a credit score, a 700 credit score, and go down there and buy your car, right? And you can pay the car off over time. But what happens when you have to work and sell your cows and 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 and, and pluck the chickens and all and, and, and sell these eggs to save up to just buy you a car that really don't work properly? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What happens when that stuff happens? And we are a society, and women in this society have been given a convenience that requires them not to be women and not to be wives. Wow. Yeah. You know, I know I kind of went in this, but I'm just trying to get my you, brain. You brought it around third base. I'm, I'm trying to get my brain, you know, I'm trying to get the little hamster. The, you know. statement. You brought it around third on that one. Right. So everything is handed to them. And that's the problem with African-American women, Right. It was it, it was one thing for everything to be okay. We're going to ensure we're, you guys are not left behind, but it became a crutch, and then it became oh look what we have black men. I just read something online that was talking about in Atlanta in a district in Atlanta they're going to give black women a guarantee eight hundred and fifty dollars a month. Yeah, I saw that. They're doing that in another city too, right? But they compared they say in comparison to white men's income. They didn't, they didn't even compare them to white women, Hispanic women. They didn't even compare white black men to white men. They compare wh- black women to white men because really and truly, um, the black man is obsolete. In their eyes, the black man is obsolete. He don't matter. What matters is the white man, right? Mm. I hate to say it like that. So if you're you're asking brothers to, to me to play a weight and never receive your 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 do your do reward game because the society has been set up for black women to not have to do anything but have everything handed to them and that's their expectation. Yeah. So my wife has been in this country for two years. She's been in this country for two years. When my wife got here, mind you, COVID set her back a year. So really, she's been going hard for one year. She's already a, um, a, a certified dental assistant. Already, she's already came in and raising two stepchildren. She was going to school full time. 
She was doing all of these things. And she's like, I still have to help my husband build. Never, not one time complaining to me, baby, this is too hard for me. Everything that she said is, we're, I'm following where, you, where you're taking me, right? And we're going to build these things together, right? When she works, I don't ask her about her money. I really don't. I, you know, I'm a man. I take care of all the bills and stuff in the house. But I don't have to because she automatically takes her money and contributes it to the house. She may not be paying bills, but there's a lot of things as a man I don't have to worry about because she take care of, right? And so you're gonna, we're going to need women like that. And yes, I'm going to say my wife is the, is the example. We're going to need women like that in order to be able to successfully build a community where she's saying me and my husband are in this together and we're not going to be reliant upon the government. We, not, we can't deal with that with women that have, you can't have two husbands. The government can't be your husband and yet you expect them to be paired with black men and say, okay, we're going to rebuild the community. Black men, black men are going to have to, for one, I do agree, black men do need to step up, but we're going to have to step up and choose better women. Number one. Now, it's to find those women in this environment is a needle in a haystack. So we're going to have to import our own. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what I feel about it. Now, I'm not just flat out throwing every black woman away. I'm not. I'm not doing that because I think that would be wrong. But they have to have that awakening in their mind and have to understand that, you know what? I have to help this man build. He is not my adversary. And she should be asking the question of why the government is giving me everything and not giving us nothing. She's giving me, they're giving me everything and not giving us a dang thing. They're not handing nothing to him. I'm like, my bad. I'm stopping. I went off on a tangent. Y'all go ahead. <laughs> my bad. My, right. my bad. My bad. I apologize. So, no, no need to apologize, man. She said, uh, was talking about the, the, what we was talking about earlier about like uh, racism in America and all this. Crazy. She said, "Is it? It's not the problem that we are just keep educating the next generation on our history or slash his story to extend where they adapt to hate and fear." And I was like, "Yes, to an extent, that is what's happening." But that's, I believe, that is because they are not teaching the whole story. But like they say history is written written by the winners. Mm -hmm. Losers just have to read about it the next day. I think that's bad. Like I know here in 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 America, they're trying to do away with teaching about the 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 dark spots in American history, i.e., slavery, what happened to the Indians, and all the bad. They, all they want to talk about is the the highlights of American history, and they don't want to tell it in its entirety. That is a mistake because if you don't know, you're doomed to repeat the stuff that the people that came before you did, and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, brother, but that's assuming that education begins with the school system. See, exactly, for me, that, that is in another for me, education so. begins in my house. Yes, it exactly. So my child is office. not just relying on the, the education that he or she may receive in a public or private school setting. Exactly. Exactly. No, as, 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 a, as, as a parental figure, it is the responsibility of, you know, uh, the parents yeah. to ensure that their child has access to education to offset the deficiencies that exist in the current school structure. Exactly. Not unless you could find, you know, some sort of alternative structures, which I know, you know, black people are building. Um, there's been an increase in homeschooling and different things of that nature. So, you know, I think that um, getting out of this mindset that we're going to rely on a state to educate our kids yeah. can speak to what the, what the question was talking about. Yeah. No, definitely. I 100% I, I, I agree. And I think, but who's the first teacher? I was gonna, I was the, gonna mother. Say that. I was the mother, the mother, point. <laughs> Man, the mother is the is the first teacher, and I think that look, men and women, no matter what race you are, we need each other. Absolutely, we are complementary pieces to each other. Um, simple and plain. And if you're going to build a community, you have to have the men and the women on the same page. You can't. I don't agree with this gender war. At all that they they're pushing in this black community, I don't. It's trash, bro. It's trash, because you know it. To me, it's a civil war. Who wins in the civil war? No one. 
right? You're killing off your own kind, killing off your own. I just think it's retarded. In, in my opinion, if I could say that word on YouTube, I think it's stupid. All right. If I, but I also feel like that in order for you to be able to move in a direction together, you have to be able to agree. All right. And you have to be able to iron out a deal in the contract. See, the social contract between um, over here when the family structure has been broken. Like America, America broke the social. Oh, Lord, I'm going off on a tangent again. Anywho, I'm sorry. No, man, <laughs> like, go, my, go there, man. Man, um, the social contract between African American women, I don't want to keep talking about black men and black men, <laughs> but the social contract has been broken and it needs to be repaired. It has to have an understanding that, okay, if you want to rebuild a community, you're going to have to do your part. I'm going to have to do my part with demand it to him. All right. When it comes to racism in America, you know, I think that, you know, a like Karen just said, you have to be able to listen, understand, and conversate. I, I 100% agree. Yeah. I, I mean, I 100% agree. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And I just, I just think that that's the problem. That's the problem. You have to be able, if someone is telling you, I could use my situation, for example, with me and my ex-wife. I don't know how many times I've communicated with her in order for us to be able to co-parent. There has to be mutual respect and common courtesy. All right? Co-parenting, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, look, when a marriage breaks down, the children suffer more than anything. They're they're outside of the home with one or the other parent, right? And it should never happen, but when you when you have to co-parent, you have to be able to listen, right? Because you got a common goal, which is to raise your children. And you got to say, "Well, I can, it it benefits them none for me to tear them down. For for me to tear the other person down, it benefits the children none." Right? May make me feel good at the moment, but it's not going to benefit the children at all. And I think workload. So what now? You're just adding to your workload. E exactly. Right. And you have to say, you know what? Me and this person may disagree about these things, but our common um our common goal is more important than whether we disagree or not. Right? And so that's to me, my situation is the problem in America at large and our community. You know, when we talk about the effects of integration and we talk about we talk about the the dynamic between the, the black man and the black woman and we talk about the gender war. OK, well, if we're fighting then who's listening, that's the difference between an argument and a discussion. Yeah. Most people don't know that. That's true. <laughs> you know, two people can't sit and say something different. To, with, without it being an argument, most people don't know how to talk and have a discussion, and like with varying viewpoints. Like, I love you to death, but I don't agree with everything you said, and you vice versa. But like I right. can hear the merits of your, for lack of a better term, argument, and see that see the validity of the things that you are saying, and vice versa. Right. Yeah, we could do. We could do as a as a as a as a community. We could do a. We could do a lot um, to improve upon our ability to conflict resolve in a healthy way. We do not know how to, we do not know, you know, the, the nuances that come with, and just, I mean, even the basic principles of conflict resolution, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I just want to be heard. You just want to be heard. There's a lot of emotion that's involved that kind of mm -hmm. clouds things. So I think that definitely you know getting back to basics of conflict resolution and that begins with active yeah, listening that, that was what, one of the things that, that josh that uh katie was talking about basic fundamentals and stepping up and as black men stepping up in the community is like you we are the should be the leaders of our community okay we should be able to like look i hear what you're saying i feel what you're saying but we regardless of how you feel you still have to act and conduct yourself accordingly because it is not just us 
That's what we, we are laying the groundwork and the fundamentals and the bricks on the road to where we are trying to make our future generations go. Mm-hmm. That's on us. It was like, cause they're, and they're, the ki- y'all got kids. I ain't got kids, but I'm around children. They, they are sponges. They see and say everything that you do. Mm-hmm. So what you put in them is what you're going to get out of them. <clears throat> it's not only, it's not only that though, Alex, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Ghost. We need to, we know each other personally, yeah. but you're teaching the, you're teaching your children, whether it's male or female, how to deal with the opposite sex. Mm-hmm. And it's not just about you actively teaching, but it's about some of the things they're observing as well. Right, right, right. You know, and and if you're teaching, you know, like I had to have a conversation with my son about about girls, right? And he came home the other day. I want to say it was Friday. He was really upset. He came in the house and his energy was just off. He bought his one little friend like a Valentine's gift. He bought her a teddy bear and some more stuff. And all the other girls started treating me mean like the entire week because, because of that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he was like, I don't know why they're being mean to me. And it was frustrating him. And I was like, well, what did you do? He was like, well, I didn't do anything, Dad. I'm like, you had to have done something. He's like, and I knew what he had done. I knew he bought his friend a gift or whatever. And I was like, son, basically what you did, and I say you you struck jealousy up in girls. And a lot of times they don't know how to respond to that, right? And we were talking about um, him and his interaction because I'm not going to put my son's business in the street, but no, he did some stuff and I had to have a conversation with him about it. And one of the things that I said to him, I was like, man, you you don't really want to go down that path because it will cause you to see women in a skewed light. Like you will only see them from a standpoint of um, objects of your objects. Mm. Yeah, my, my brain okay. is just, just, okay. just, I'm talking about it taking a pause every time I get ready to make a statement. It's just like mute. <laughs> but you start to see them as objects and not actually human beings. Yeah. Right. And you never really want to look at a woman just as an object. Now, I told him, I said, now, there's a whole lot of stuff that you have to learn about women. There's a whole lot of stuff that you have to learn about. Just It's nothing wrong that she's doing. She's just actually being a woman. And women move a certain way. But you don't want to go in there with a skewed lens thinking, okay, well, this is all you are to me. Right? And he was talking to me about, you know, his mom. And he was like, well, you know, giving me his opinion about you know, I let him talk to me about it. I really did. I let him talk to me about how he felt about me and, his, me and his mom's interactions. And he told me the other day, he said, I understand why you deal with mom the way that you deal with her now. And I was like, why you say that? And he was like, you don't want to fight with her. And, he, and he, he's 14 and he peeped that. He said, dad, you don't, you don't want to fight with her. And I was mm-hmm. like, I don't want to fight with her because I don't want you to take a side. I don't mm-hmm. want you to feel like you have to choose between your mother and your father. And I don't want to say anything disrespectful to her because I don't want you thinking that it's okay for men to disrespect women. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I can't allow her to disrespect me because I don't want you to think that it's okay for women to disrespect you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, so I, I let you see me love on Mama Mercy. I let you see me talk to Mama Mercy a certain type of way. I let you see me, I, I let I let him see me and her come to decisions together. So you can understand what it's like for a submissive woman and her head, a husband that's the head, move and work in unison. And I'm like, just because I'm the head of the home, it doesn't mean I don't listen to my woman. I hear her out. You know, but ultimately, you know, I have the final say. But she's my helpmate for a reason. You know, and so... I wanted him to see that because it's not, I'm like, it's not all just, I'm like a lot of things that I said, son, a lot of times that you were supposed to get in trouble and I didn't punish you was because of her. She came to me and was like, I think you're being too hot. Mm-hmm. And I'm in full fledged, you know, I'm about to get him. I'm tired of him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I told him totally one time too many, you know, I sound, like I said, I'm sounding like, you know, I'm in full fledged dad mode. And she's saying, well, baby, he's being a boy. Just, just, just talk to him. And it's like, all right, I talked to him. And I, one day he heard her say that to me. He heard her say, 
just talk. I'm like, no, I'm gonna kick his ass. She's like, don't. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? She was like, don't just talk to him. And he came back to me later and told me, you know, dad, I wasn't supposed to be listening, but I heard what Mama Mercy said to you. And I was like, well, what did you hear? He was like, she told you not to, not to, not to get me. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, you know, sometimes, you know, you know, she's your saving grace, man. Cause I, I want to <laughs> thrash you a couple of times, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, no, sometimes I punished you. And it was like what she was saying. I'm like, I ain't trying to hear that. You know, I'm going to get him, you know, but I tell him that, you know, I don't want you to think that men and women are supposed to be fighting. They're not supposed to be fighting, you know, and you know, he seen my wife get mad at me. You know, he seen him. It, it was it was never something disrespectful when she got upset with me about it. She was just mad, you know. And he was just he came in the room. And he just kind of looked at me. I'm like, yeah, son, you might not want to go in there. It's, it's raffle in there. <laughs> you know, it was like, you know, she on a rampage and she was back there. And another thing, you know, so she's so, <laughs> so she's so she's. I'm like, and you know, don't. And I said, you have a lot to learn about women. Right. And I was like, you know, I said something, you know, and it, she didn't, she didn't like it, but I'm like, we're good. She just mad. You know, she probably give me the cold shoulder for about another hour or two. It'd be good. You know, but I'm like, you, you let her be a woman. I'm like, but you'll never see me say or do anything disrespectful towards my wife. And you'll never see her say and do anything disrespectful. Like we can disagree, but it's just respectfully. Right. And even if my wife disagrees with me, um, even if my wife is disagreeing with me, she's not disrespecting me by disagreeing with me. She's like, well, baby, you know, I've said what I said. So, you know, I have nothing else to say on the matter. And that's it. Right. I don't I'm not fighting with her. And I'm just telling him this is important for you to see. And. It's also important, like, you know, um, me, and his, me and his mom had a conversation. And his, his mom, you know, she's a gynocrat. I don't know no other word for it. She's just one of those women that she has to have it her way. If she don't have it her way, she's going to try to force you to have it her way. And she does it to him. Hmm. And, you know, it frustrates him. And I let him make his decisions. And like I told him, I said, it's important for a man to make a decision. You want to lead somebody's daughter one day, right? You can't be second guessing yourself. But I'm in rambling, so um, let me let me let me. Let me no, I think I think it's great. I mean, he gets to see both sides. Unfortunately, you know, things with mom, um, you know, your ex wife or whatever isn't the best right now. But him acknowledging that you are taking a very diplomatic approach to things and and handling issues, trying to be democratic you know um and then seeing the opposite side with your wife and 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 how uh, there's collaboration you know and and handling issues and resolving matters and stuff like that i think it, i think it's good balance it is important for children to see balance because they are sponges and you know they are soaking up they are soaking up things so i i just think that um it sounds like you know there's a there's a degree of faith that your wife has in your ability to actually lead the family and make sound decisions and stuff like that and unfortunately i don't think a lot of our women here in america have faith in the black man's ability to actually lead a lot of that is fear but a lot, lot of that is like you said a lot of lack of exposure to what healthy masculinity look like Right. Maybe they didn't have a dad in the home or father figure, grandfather, whoever. So there's an absence, right? And instead of actually seeing real world examples, they're getting hit with all this literature and all this rhetoric and all this, you know what I mean? Like this nonsense that really kind of shades and paints black men in a certain way. I mean, a lot of a lot of my experiences with black American women, I mean, as you know, you know, my fiance, she's she's Sudanese and um, Up top. but my experience <laughs> with, with black American women has really, really, it, it's been distilled down to fear, man, mm. you know, and I think that that's on both sides. I think I that we are afraid to be vulnerable in front of them because of a history of 
manipulation of that vulnerability, rejection of that vulnerability, dismissal mm -hmm. of that vulnerability in comparison to others. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not strong. You're not this. You're not that. And then I see, you know, fear on their side, you know, in, in, in terms of, can I be vulnerable in front of him? Do I trust mm -hmm. him to lead? Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm fighting things that my mom or my grandmother may have told me about black men and how they're going to leave me and how they're not ish and this, that, and the third. So I think that there's a great deal of conflict when you look at the black man and the black woman in America. And these are hurdles that can't be resolved on YouTube. They can't be resolved on TikTok. They can't be resolved in these Reddit forums and all of these things. To a point, I think it was Ghost that may, you know, it, it's going to take people coming to the table and right. having a conversation. Right. Black men, it's going to require us shedding our traps and listening. And black women are going to have to be equally as, you know, uh, collaborative in that they're going to have to shut up and they're going to have to listen. And if we're not able to do that or we're not willing to do that, then let's just say so, right? And then and encourage each other to kind of get in where you fit in. But, you know, I, I it, it, it just doesn't seem like by and large women Black women are willing to do that. They just, they don't feel like they have to. They don't feel like they need to. So it makes it hard. You know what I mean? Like most of the black men that I talk to, they want to be with black women. They do. They want to be with y'all. We want to be with y'all. <laughs> like, I don't they, know they, who they can really say it, do. how it can be said, what languages it can be said in. Black men want to be with black women. Right. At this particular stage in 2022, you as a black woman have to understand what impediments are you placing mm -hmm. in the dynamic that's preventing that from happening. Right. I mean, man, Ishmael, you are just spot on because that's honestly the assessment that I made. Like these brothers want to be with black women. I'm going to get ready to bring the stream to a close um, in a oh. second. But there's a... There, Man, it's it's it goes without saying that in order for you to be able to cooperate, there has to be trust and grace extended on both sides. You have to be willing to to be quiet and listen, and you have to be willing to um, hear what the other party needs. Everybody's going to have something that they need in the equation, and I just think, in my opinion. I just think black women don't want to come to the table and listen because they don't have to. They don't have to. That's just really what I think. What'd you say, this man? No, I, I didn't say anything. I, you know, I think that that's definitely that's a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's I, a there's a large segment of black women that feel like they don't have to. Yeah, they don't. And I think it's the the thing about it is is I think it's one of the most saddest things. Because I think that the ADOS woman has proven that she has the strength. You know, all these things that's been going on for years, you, you talk about the American society at large was placed on the backs of black women at one point. And they have the strength to, it's just the unwillingness to. Because I think these brothers want to be with black women. They really do. Um, no question, yeah. no doubt in my mind. No doubt that they want to but at some point when you see your mother treat your father a certain way your grandmother treat your granddad a certain way your aunts and your uncles treating your treating men in their life a certain way that's one of the reasons why these brothers go off and marry white women is no one's talking about that it's like we want to talk about the rejection they want to talk about okay you just don't you just betraying your race but am i though if every woman that I know that that looks like my mother is toxic, like my 10 year old told me, um, she said, I have an African man. Corinne said that. <laughs> um, my 10 year old told me that he doesn't like dealing with black girls. 10. Wow. You know, 
And I'll say why. And he said, because they have an attitude and they're bossy. So they start to move away. And not to mention you got, you, you talking about, you got a, a assimilation to where you got communities moving in with each other, where you, you got uh, Hispanic women and white women and Asian women and black women and black men, all these other things, they're, they're co-mingling, right? It's no longer taboo. So if I have the, if I'm exposed to a woman that's treating me better, I'm going to probably choose that regardless of how they look. You know what I'm saying? Because I would tell you flat out, um, it never crossed in my mind not to be with an African woman, right? I wanted to be with a, with a woman. I just like beautiful black women. I do. And I like the chocolate skinned women. My wife just happens to be fair skinned, <laughs> but I like the darker skinned women. I think darker skinned women, I find them extremely attractive. Me too. Um, that's why you keep talking about Sudanese. I'm like, man. <laughs> yeah, but she's, she's a little bit more Arab looking. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, she's not Northern okay. Sudan, not necessarily oh, okay. Southern Sudan. Yeah. But um, I'm getting ready to bring this to a close because uh, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I appreciate I, you having the conversation. You know, I appreciate you guys for coming on. I appreciate everybody in the um, chats, um, the comment session, adding their things. I think there was a lot of question that was posed that kept the conversation going. I'm getting better at this. I apologize for my brain being on vacation part of the night and then sabbatical the other night. So, <laughs> it happens. You know, um. For whatever reason, I can just articulate my thoughts like I wanted to. I don't know what that was about. Um, I really do apologize. But, I, I mean, I thank all of y'all for coming through, man. This has been wonderful. I love the conversation. You sure. Know, I don't feel like I added much. But I love the conversation. Integration um, illusion. It's an illusion. Yeah. It's an illusion. 6 a.m. here. Thanks, you guys. Wow. I appreciate you for staying up with us. You all the way in Germany at 6 a.m., and you're listening to my, to to this podcast, that means a lot to me. That really, really does mean so. a lot to me. I really appreciate it. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, we're going to have more um, lives like this and stuff. Um, I'm trying to really build the channel up. So I'm trying to be more inclusive, not just go hard on black women. Because I did that. I think yeah, I was I red pill raging. I think I was red pill raging for a while. A little bit, man. You, have, you know <laughs> He, he was a little, little, little pink, little pink. Yeah, I was like, yeah. Little you know, rose, right? Rose, you know, rose rage. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm on my red pill rage stage, and um, you know, I'm, you know, so, but yeah. But anyway, man, I thank you guys for coming through. Um, I'm, I really appreciate it, man. And I guess I'll see thank you, guys you for having us, man. All right, All right, yeah. Peace. Y'all right, be good. Sleep All right. You too, man. Peace. Later. later.